All righty there, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, good evening, good night, and good afternoon. It's your nighttime, right time, DJ, DJ Music, and welcome to another episode of The Chop Shop. Y'all see what we was talking about earlier, while well, you saw it in the description, the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse up there in Baltimore. Some folks already want to go with the conspiracy theory. Are we, is, was this a, uh, I don't want to use the word attack, a terrorist attack, or was it the domestic terrorism? All kinds of things already floating around out there in the air, folks. We got a little bit of footage that we're going to show you. And plus another couple of things that we're going to talk about uh, in the next uh, couple, maybe hour, hour and a half or so. And, you know, you folks can make your own decisions about what's going on. But I'm going to enlighten you a little bit on what I think. Yeah, not so much, hey, Gigi, how you doing? Not so much, um, how, do, how do I say this? Not so much the direct impact of it but the far-reaching impacts of what's going to happen with this major uh throw throw we'd say that art new style how you doing good brother uh, but this major throwaway that's been blocked okay and as i was talking to Shar earlier and i actually Shar willie and my man from the radio station uh dreadhead said they'll be joining us here and look joining me here in just a little bit ladies and gentlemen but uh, as a matter of fact, let me go ahead and bring these folks on in now. If you folks will go ahead and unmute for me there, uh, said, go ahead and unmute yourself and uh, Shar, unmute yourself. And uh, let's go ahead and say hello to the good folks. Greetings, everyone. How you doing, Art and Gigi? Welcome, welcome. Hey, hey. Right here. All right, we got Dreadhead said in here, folks. And if you are uh, uh, new to the, to the stream there, uh, normally he's a, a DJ on uh, Classic R&B Jams. On Thursday nights, you can catch him live with the Hook and Hennessy show. Always a great show. I know I'm patting, this up, patting him on the back a little bit, but my man plays some great music there. But anyway, we didn't come here to talk about the radio station, folks. We came here to talk about this, this, I don't know. I, I want to call it tragedy, but I think it's a little bit more to it than that. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, you, uh, Shar. What uh, What do you know? Uh, what What are your thoughts on the, the bridge uh, bridge collapse? Well, when I woke up in the morning, um, I just happened to wake up about maybe 4 a.m. and I saw that. I'm like, "What's going on?" I'm like, "1:30 in the morning," but it was more of what was said after the accident. Because uh, I'm like, okay, I get something could happen. But when they were saying um, they lost power and they had a mayday, and I'm like, well, what's going on with people being injured? I'm, I'm confused. And when did they lose power? So that was the big thing for me. And then after that, I just started listening to the reports. And then I had more questions. Right. Uh, true to your name, uh, just that short. I've got questions. <laughs> she had <laughs> <laughs> <That's true. laughs> And what about you, Sam? What's what's your take on the on the bridge? Have, have you been following the news of uh, this? I know we just we just uh I was uh, we was working on the radio station earlier and I know you just an invite, so I kind of caught you off guard, but uh, what's your thoughts on it, brother? Okay, well what I heard yesterday was that they lost power twice and they couldn't control it and it hit the bridge. And the understanding that I got is, is that it was only six people that was on the bridge because the police came and they blocked the traffic. And one of the police officers was finna go get the, the six workers that was on the bridge. But by the time he got in his car, the bridge collapsed. Uh, so that's what so I heard. Wasn't See again that that's why I'm glad I have you guys here because I didn't know I didn't hear that part, uh Sam. You know, yeah. Right? We're all different parts of, of the country here. So you you guys get might get news that's a little bit more updated than me, or I might we might watch different TVs. But I didn't hear that part that the policeman I did hear the part that uh about the Mayday distress call that went out uh, you know prior to the uh the ship hitting the uh, pylons. Hey, what's up there, Mr. Rochelle? One of my double dogs down in there. How you doing, good brother? And, um, you know, for me, as I'm looking at it, folks, I, I have some footage that, I'm, that we're gonna, I'm gonna share with you. To me, being in the Marine Corps, and, and I'm sure my Amanda that's down in, in the listening lounge, she can tell you this well, this it, it's, something ain't right about this. Something's not right about it. Me, I'm from Port City. 
and uh, uh, and I know folks that work on the docks. One thing I do notice about a lot of these big ships that come into these docks, they're always escorted by barges. One on each side. Tugboats. Tugboats, right. Yeah. To ensure, to, to ensure until, until they get out into open harbor or uh, to open sea, that's when the tugboats start backing off. So my first question would be, what's up there, uh, Mr. Mitchell? How you doing? My first question would be, why were there no tugboats? Hmm. Well, I think that the tugboats was only there if needed. Now, um, under the assumption, and believe me, I live I live in Chicago, so, and Shire, I know you know this, you know, uh, there are tugboats in Lake Michigan, and there's bridges in Chicago, mm -hmm. like drawbridges, like for real. You can cross the Chicago River, and if something's going through it, they raise the bridge, they will shut traffic down for that. Um, mm -hmm. I think that the I think that the 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 understanding is is that if the ship wouldn't have lost power, then it could have navigated through the uh, the river that it was going through. But uh, with it losing power, they probably did have to call for assistance for the tugboats, and right. you know that takes time. This is like it's like if it's a fire, you know right. what I'm saying. Uh, you know, when the fire department get the call, they got to scramble to get ready to go to that fire to put it out. True but that. by then, the fire is already there, and they have to work to put it out. And I'm quite sure it's probably the same thing with the tugboats. Okay, I, I'll, I'll go with that that explanation you said. But uh, let me play devil's advocate to you. And sorry, you can okay. chime, in, chime in anytime you like. But, okay, if the ship lost power, and... <laughs> instead of the ship making a turn why didn't it just keep going straight because that river from what i understand from what from, from what i'm looking at it it's, it's not a river that has a strong current yeah but how wide is it um in, in this case it, it, with with the if you when, well, you'll see the footage when, when i show you the footage you will see that the tugboat made a, a substantial turn to the left before it lost, uh, after it won a game report. Well, anyway, let's just take a look at this footage, folks, and you folks tell me what you think. Yeah, it's got some um, accompanied a, a uh, a conversation, and so let's take a listen. If you folks don't mind muting for just a second. Uh, the tragedy of the Francis Key Bridge in Baltimore, I-695, being struck by this apparently um, storage tanker that lost power and collapsed into the bridge. I want to show this video of this. I'm sure you've seen this probably a lot today, but I don't think you've ever seen the video like this. This is a video that kind of shows you know, through animation, the different segmentations of this tanker colliding with this bridge. Uh, and, you know, the whole title of this video is, could this have been prevented? And it's interesting to kind of look at this. I'm not trying to start conspiracies, but I think we wouldn't be doing our due diligence if we didn't do our, conduct our own investigation. I want you to watch this video and then we'll take a look at it. So there you can see it was power loss number one. It loses power. What I find very... Okay, folks, there's power loss number one. As you can see, the ship is dark. So there's no power. Okay? So you'll see as the ship moves along a little bit further, it regains power for a really short amount of time. Okay? Strange, and this is sped up, is that it immediately recovers and... As you can see now, in less than less than 30 seconds, because he says it's it's sped up, but in less than 30 seconds, power they are able to restore power. Okay. And it's still turning into the bridge. You see that thick smoke right there? And then watch this. Power loss number two happens. Smoke is still there. Recovery once more. And I know that the pilots were calling Mayday. And then 
way too late. And you can see there's people working on the bridge. There's cars. And then look at how. Now, you guys can uh, unmute your mics. Okay. Now, I, I want to ask you a question, uh, folks. Did y'all see how quickly that bridge collapsed? That was like, like dominoes. <laughs> Okay, yes. Um, no, I'm gonna take you, I'm gonna take y'all back to 1989. An earthquake did not bring down the Bay Bridge. Mm. How strong was that earthquake? It oh, wreaked oh. havoc in San Francisco. I think it was, I think it was like, uh, I think it was like a 9.2. Yeah, it was a pretty heavy earthquake, and it still did not bring down the Bay Bridge. That bridge that crosses the that goes into Oakland. Now part of the upper deck did collapse. But it still didn't bring it down. Mother Nature couldn't bring down this bridge. But unless now think about it, they said they lost power. Now nautical okay. knots, we all we all know nautical knots is a little bit different from miles per hour. But as you can see, the ship was not at full power. So at best. The bridge shouldn't have came down. There should have maybe been some structural damage. But I don't think this barge, this ship, hit that pylon hard enough to bring that entire structure down as quickly as it did. Well, I would say this. You see, and you got the video paused, right? But you see the other side of the bridge, right? Mm -hmm. You see the support that it got holding it up? Compare that to the ship. Those are twigs. Yeah, but you also, I, I see what you're saying, said, but this, this, well, this bridge was built in, if I'm not mistaken, 1975. So it has to have had some retrofits at one time or the other. I don't know. I didn't think that they would, I didn't think that they would think nothing that large would hit it because if you look at that barge or that ship and you look at the structure of the bridge that's still up, those are twigs. Those are like sticks. And it's it's like the case of car versus truck, truck versus train. You know what I'm saying? Right. The, the heavier uh, thing wins. What about you, Char? What say you so far? Oh, I want to go back, and I think it just came to me that um, when you mentioned that it lost power and then the power came back on. Now I just got a new question. When did mm -hmm. it lose power originally? I mean, is this a, okay, this, the guy has here power loss number one, but is this really number one? I mean, is this when it first happened and they say, hey, mayday, mayday, we just, uh, we lost power. Is this when it happened just now? Another another good question, sure. And again, this like my man said, you know, normally we take uh, NTSB at its word, but you know, we we now now know that that's not a good thing to do. And fortunately, everybody is a an, a, a, a PI on the internet. <laughs> that's a good thing. So you know, some something that you know the so-called professionals might miss that to, to the naked eye or to the trained eye they might miss, but also. It's not bad to have a untrained set of eyes looking at it. Wouldn't y'all agree? Yes. Hmm. And so, uh, and seriously, this is the first time like I've read about it. I just mm -hmm. the first time I've seen a video of it. But mm -hmm. I will say this, okay. Um I was listening to MB MSNBC earlier this morning. Like I listen to MSNBC every morning. Yeah. And okay. They had a guy that was, um, he's a political analyst, but he was with the Navy. And he was saying that even if they would have dropped the anchor, it wouldn't have been enough time to stop this barge from hitting that bridge. Because once it lose power, you can't control it. You can't steer it. Yeah. So it's going to go I, wherever it's going to go. I, I, I'll agree with that. And, and I'll agree wholeheartedly with that. The ship's pro 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 propulsion, you know, the, uh, what do you call this? The screws would have still been turning. 
Now, my thing is, my, my thing is, okay. The next question is: they see, they say you have, they see black smoke coming out of, out of the engine. Is that not something that somebody should have been aware of when you see all that plumes of black smoke coming out of there? Is I've I've seen ships that. You know, I won't call them steamships, but we go all the way back into, you know, the old paddle boats and stuff like that. That's when we used mm -hmm. to see, like, uh, what's the name of the movie? The Titanic? You know, that black smoke? Because somebody was shoveling coal up into the, you know, to, to the whatchamacallit. But this ship, you know, is it, is it, does the propulsion electronically ran or is it ran by engines? Which one? Is electricity ran by engines as well. Which one? It's probably both. Seriously. Next, next probably question. Both. Right. So that would be my next question. Are they trying to tell me that there's no fail safes just in case these incidents happen? There's nothing you can do with this. Absolutely nothing they could have done other than hit the bridge because Sharp brought up a good point. When was the first time that they lost power? They had, they had to be early enough for the policeman to think that he could go up on the bridge and save somebody. It had to be early enough for them to call and say, Mayday, hey, let's start blocking this bridge off and start getting some of this traffic up off of here. And that was the point that I was going to make because it was early enough because they was able to block the, the traffic. So yeah. this is the thing, regardless of how bad it looks and, you know, um, condolences to the families of the people that were still on the bridge. Definitely. It was no cars on the bridge when it happened. They, the police literally shut it off. They shut off traffic on both sides. So the mayday wasn't enough time. I just think that, um, and I'm a, and I'm a, and I'm gonna go with the, uh, you know what I heard on the news this morning about how, I right, the first time maybe when the power came on they probably figured that they can kind of swerve it. Yeah, but the swerve but, was into the pylon, not away from the pylon. That's the problem that the, the, the majority of the world is having. I can see you swerving away from the pylon, but from all the videos that I've seen, maybe sure, maybe I missed something, or maybe I'm looking at it from a di different angle. But when you be in agreement that the, the the videos that we've seen shows the clip clearly turning in towards the pylon, not away from it. Yes, that's what it uh, looks like from our, you know. From the naked eye, right. <laughs> that's what it looks like. Right. From the right, from yeah. the untrained eye. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but but let, let's go. Let's go ahead and continue. Let's watch some more of this footage. If we didn't do our, our, right. our, our own investigation, I want you to watch this video and then we'll take a look at it. So there, you can see it was power loss number one. It loses power. What I find very strange, and this is sped up, is that it immediately recovers. And it's still turning into the bridge. You see that thick smoke right there? And then watch this. Power loss number two happens. Smoke is still there. Recovery once more. And I know that the pilots were calling Mayday. And then way too late. And you can see there's people working on the bridge. There's cars. And then look at how fast that thing just collapses. Now... I know I don't I'm not an engineer okay I'm not an engineer but it seems am I the only one that finds it very odd that this bridge which is ginormous it is absolutely huge collapsed so quickly and in the specific areas that it collapsed um, you could almost see right above my head that point of the bridge at the left of your screen there seems to almost be a detonation charge up there again i'm not trying to start a conspiracy and god knows how heavy and how big if you're an engineer if you know about this stuff let me know in the comments but i'm going to give you some facts i'm going to give you some and here there goes there goes another thing folks uh, you know a lot of people say that they saw a detonation could that be could that explain why the bridge fell down as quick as it did could that be the reason i don't think so i don't think so because i didn't see it i think that's a conspiracy theory i think that the bar pretty much ran into the bridge now i do understand I, I can't understand how people can figure if the power came back came on how come they didn't try to make it go into because 
that middle part right there, and I'm looking at the video. You just watched, you just watched There's plenty of room for that for that bars to pass under if they were, if they could have got it under there without hitting the bridge. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If so, they had, if they had, I get that part. Right. If the if the barge hadn't if the boat hadn't swayed, it would have never have hit oh! that pylon. Right. But I don't see the conspiracy theory about the about the explosion. Um, they did that with 9-11, but they had video that showed that I didn't see any explosions in this video. But that's me. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But well, let's let's continue I'm, here. I'm looking at it. Okay. Um, actual evidentiary substance about this specific tanker, this specific storage ship, this boat, in just a second. Uh, but here, I want to I want to cut to this clip right here, showing the enormity. I don't think people understand the scope and the macro perspective of how enormous this bridge is. Check this out. Okay, this is dash cam footage of a driver driving over. The Baltimore Bridge. What's up, APTV? How you doing, brother? I want you to just kind of watch this with me. So I, I think this truly reveals the scale of what is so quickly. Check this out. You see, I mean, this is a major ice and it is absolutely enormous. This is a small bridge. The specification. For those of you that are that might be listening in there, but that are from uh, South Carolina, this may look familiar to you. This may be. This may look like the Arthur Ravenel Bridge in Monk's Corner. This may look familiar to you, folks. Because this is just almost a, it's just how it is, just just how the bridge looks that goes. Uh, it, it takes you from Charleston to the Barrier Islands. Uh, I've, I've been on a few other bridges, but to, to me, I, I still don't see how a bridge of this magnitude collapse that quick. This is the problem that I'm having. And, and as, as you can see, you can see the scale of this bridge. And this bridge just dropped like it was matchsticks. From a boat hitting it. Nothing more, nothing less. A boat. And, uh, uh, and Mr. Mitchell, you say you went over that bridge every every Sunday. Um, listen, uh, I, if you want, I could drop the link down there, and you can tell me. I mean, I, well, you can type it down in there since you drove across it every week. Um, let, let me ask you: Is is the bridge rickety? I mean, did it make a lot of noise, or you know, did it, did it ever give any? Did it look like the bridge was unstable or unsafe? Go ahead and answer that question for me down in, in the uh, in the lounge there for me, Mitch, and we'll we'll uh, continue. That's another one of my devil dogs from back in the day, there, folks. The weight, the depth, the scope of this bridge is absolutely ginormous okay the container ship apparently lost power then smashed okay now what we're going to view here folks is the actual because it and no none of the uh, news shows that i i've watched except this one put out any real news about this ship itself of course everybody was talking about the bridge collapse and you know and all these other different things but Look, this is a ship that shouldn't have been on the water. This is a ship that should have been in dry dock being repaired. Look. Into Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge. This container ship was actually cited last year for a deficiency with its propulsion. Excuse a deficiency with its propulsion system last year. Mm, what did they say was the cause of they didn't have no power? They said, we can't steer the ship. That's why we ran into it. Did the ship look like it was being steered? Did it make some kind of move to the left or to the right? Depends on how you look at it. You folks can answer that. or Well, when it was sped up, it appeared that it was being steered, but I haven't seen it in a while, you know, at regular speed, so I can't really answer that. But I will say, and, and I'm just going to say it jokingly, 
you know, mm-hmm. it, you know, they didn't have the money and, you know, all the money kind of went toward, you know, the migrants. So the migrants. They fix it. <laughs> yeah, they, they couldn't fix it. So, you know, they had to so, use what they so- had. Wait a minute, Sean. See, that's another, that's another one of them conspiracy theories now. So what you're saying is, is the, instead of tearing the bridge down, instead of retrofitting it, spending all that taxpayer money, send that boat down there to do it. <laughs> well, you know, you never could tell. <laughs> yeah, and you're right, Mitch. They're not really not going to NTSB is not going to, uh, you know, not going to really let us know anything is to me it's going to be like the jsk and jfk assassination or a few of these other bridge collapses we'll find out about it you know our grandkids or their grandkids will find out about it about 50 years from now well what you really know happened? your president told you that everything was fine that's what he told you yesterday everything was fine with what he said everything is fine you know it was an accident and um he's gonna make sure they get federal funds and um have a good day and, and he was done Right. And, and you know, uh, Art, you're absolutely right. I was thinking about that. And I was going to mention that at the, at the top of the show, but I didn't. Isn't it ironic, folks, that the bridge is named Francis Scott Key? Who Who is Francis Scott Key? <laughs> I kind of thought of that. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it? And it's just, isn't it the same guy that said that wrote the uh, Star Spangled Banner? Yes. Said if you're talking, we can't hear you, bro. <laughs> I think you might be muted on your side or your headphones or not. Uh, you might have to take your headphones off because I can't hear you. Unless he's busy. But, uh, yeah, I but, see, but your I president. I see him talking. Oh, okay. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I was just saying your president came out and told you and talked to everybody, governors and senators and everything and um everything was fine you're gonna send some money and um go ahead on with your life right you know get your life get your life get your life baby. i don't know what baby. kind of investigation that is because i would have liked to know why i mean i still haven't heard why did it lose power but you know he right. didn't I, say so Right. Inquiring minds really want to know why did the ship lose power? Okay, did they say in did anyone on the, it was anyone on the ship injured? And so if no one on the ship was injured, shouldn't one at least one of those people be in up front and center, the captain of the ship, the first mate or somebody to say, Hey, we lost power way, way back when. They might be in protective custody. Who knows? PC. <laughs> Sid, I, I still can't hear you, brother. You might have to go in and come out again. I still can't hear you. I can see your gestures, but I can't hear you. And unplugging the microphone and, I mean, the headset and plugging it in, sometimes that works as well. Yeah. But uh, when, it, when, while Sid's uh, trying to get that fixed, let's let's continue here, sure. Okay. The M slash V dolly also crashed while leaving the port of Antwerp in 2016. Across 27 inspections conducted since the dolly was built in 2015, two deficiencies were flagged according to records from the EQSIS, the Equasis, which is the Electronic Quality um, Shipping Information System. Chilean authorities gave the dolly a deficiency for propulsion Again, even in another country, the Chilean folks, the Chilean folks said, "Uh uh-uh, let's inspect this boat. And they gave them a failing grade. What is this boat still doing on the water? Say say something. Let me see if uh, if I can hear you or not. No, still no sound from you, brother. You might have to go and adjust your uh, microphone. Or just uh just come on out just come on back out without and you without your headphones because i think that's the difference in the change um, or uh, hey, 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 uh, Mitch, we're gonna get to that yarnell we're gonna get to that part of it too trust me we're gonna roll right where you rolling up on the street and see that's what i like about these marines they always they think like me <laughs> Uh, 
and auxiliary machinery, gauges, thermometers in June of 2023. What in the world? How did this ship ever get to go out to sea again? Maryland Governor Westmore revealed Tuesday morning that the crew of the Dolly sent a May Day that the ship had lost power before the crash. The cause of the power loss is yet unknown, but officials said terrorism is not suspected. Here you can see a map of the... Okay, now my next thing, I'm sure you can unmute on this one. How would they be so quick to eliminate terrorism? If you don't know the cause, how could you say terrorism or an act of sabotage was not the reason? You heard that um, phrase, um, don't ask any question, just listen and accept the information. And I told don't you. Ask, don't, ask president, tell you. don't ask because we won't tell you. Don't ask because we won't tell you. <laughs> no, you've been told. The president told you exactly. He, he sat, uh, stood there, told you everything has been, um, it's fine. It was an accident. He going to send some money. He named all the people that he talked to. And that's it. So you so, don't have to ask any more questions. <laughs> so somebody woke up Sleepy Joe from a nap. And this is what he said he was going to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know Donald Trump is having fun with this one. <laughs> or oh, he will, that's for sure. <laughs> right. But here again, ladies and gentlemen, you see, I, I want y'all to notice there. I want y'all to look at this uh, this huge uh, body of water that's surrounded here. And if someone pointed out down in the uh, in the in the lounge, we're going to get to that. This is a major shipping lane here, folks. And look at the expansion of this bridge here. Look at the expand uh, how it expanded over this body of water here. Now, if you look at where the ship hit on this pylon here, if it would have kept straight, if it lost power or anything, it would have just gone either straight out to sea, to the left or to the right. So again, I, I, me being inquisitive, I got to ask myself, why did it run directly into that pylon? Why did it make that sudden change? It had plenty of plenty of room out there in the, in, in the open, plenty of room. Well, maybe they're going to tell you the current took it that direction or something. Um, I don't know, but they gave us what they want us to have. Um, right. but yes, we're going to keep asking questions because this isn't a full investigation. Right. I said, speak, uh, say something, brother. Let me see if I can hear you. No, you're still on mute. Uh, are you, uh, is your computer on mute on that side? Because I can see you. I, I can see everything. Everything's fine. Whatever you did to uh, to reverse it to come when you came in the first time, just go back and do that again because we was hearing you fine. Okay. I moved it too far there, folks. Let's go. Let's pick up. Uh, right and here. auxiliary machinery, gauges, thermometers in June of 2023. What in the world? How did this ship ever get to go out to sea again? Maryland Governor Westmore revealed Tuesday morning that the crew of the Dolly sent a May Day that the ship had lost power before the crash. The cause of the power loss is yet unknown, but officials said terrorism is not suspected here you can see a map of the collapse right here but check this out the ship was also given a deficiency for structural conditions described as hull damage impairing seaworthiness now if you folks are not, are not uh, familiar with uh, nautical terms seaworthiness also means that that boat had no reason absolutely no reason to be in the water it should not be transporting it should not be anything it should be in dry dock being repaired full stop and for all these who don't know when you see those containers on that ship there might they might be small but those are the containers that you see behind them semis stacked up to the brim What's on there is Following what I want to know. a 2016 collision while leaving the port of Antwerp, Belgium in 2016. I'm, I'm sorry, Char, say that again? I said, I want to know what's, what was on that. 
that um boat well I, I would un unmute your mic said let's see if we can hear you again well i will say this um uh short it couldn't have been too many things that was flammable because we did see an explosion and the boat still looked like it, it, it from what it's sitting out there now and in, in, in the in the in the the ship uh, that's sitting out there in, the, in that harbor right now it didn't look like it caught on fire so there couldn't have been too many flammables on there it couldn't have been too much hazardous material on there something going on though i yeah. mean you, you know how many questions you have about what what was going on with that ship i mean what what was on it what was lost it's just too many things but continue. yeah yeah and, and, and another thing, the time of the morning, just imagine if this was rush hour. Yeah. It was 1.30 in the morning. Just, just imagine if it was 5.30, 6 o'clock in the afternoon. 7, 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning. Sixteen. Here's some more interesting news. According to the Maritime Incident Archive shipwreck log, the Dali was attempting to leave the container terminal to head to Bremenhaven, Zubrenhaven, Zubri, Deutschland, Schweinsteiger. Sorry, I had to do that. When its bow reportedly swung around, causing the stern to scrape the side of the quay and damaging several yards of the hull. Okay, so I, 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 I have a few questions. I have a few concerns. There you can see it loses power, gains power again in just a second. Look at those cars. My God, this is harrowing. This is awful. And then look at that. It veers into almost like it was, I mean, I don't want to. And that's the part. This is the best, uh, this is the best look that I've seen of this. Yes. Even though this is at night, you can clearly see that the ship is making a turn when it's, when it has power here. You can clearly see that. Am I the only one that saw that? I see that because it was it's more um pronounced. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm say wow. intentional, but it veer it like it's a sharp turn. It makes right into that mm -hmm. um right into the bridge. Uh, there it is. One of the, um, There's the turn the right there. there of the bridge. And once it collapses and smashes, oh my gosh, look at those cars. It's just heartbreaking. Seems like it takes an eternity for it to actually smash. And then once it finally does, this massive bridge goes hasta la pasta. Oh my. I, again, it's just mm, hard to believe. That that, yeah. See what I mean? Yeah, that, mm, yeah, that, mm -mm. Said unmute yourself, sir. Uh, can you hear us? Yes, it's obvious you can hear us because you unmuted yourself, but we cannot hear you. Yeah. Did you, uh, did you disconnect your microphone? Yeah, um, go log out, log all the way back in. Yeah. And try it again. Yeah, go back, go back to the original way you came back in. Go back to and hit the um the um the link again and try it all over. That's because there's nothing we can do on this side to 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 enhance your sound. Am I correct, Sean? That is correct. Right. Because if you can hear us, that means that uh, you're definitely uh you you're on the stream. So, but uh, but again, Sean, you saw what I saw that time. Am I correct? Yeah, because that was at regular speed. Because I had been yeah. saying that you know. I've seen it maybe yeah. once slow, but this, oh, right. it, it's mm, mm, that. Right. Let, me, <laughs> let, let, right. let me see if I can back it up just a little bit here. folks. <laughs> I know everybody want to talk about Diddy. No, no Diddy right now. <laughs> no Diddy. <laughs> <laughs> this is a little bit more important. <laughs> yeah, this really affects a lot Gains of people. power again in just a second. And right. taxpayers. Look at those cars. My God, this is harrowing. This is awful. Light comes on. Look at that. It veers into almost like it was, I mean, I don't want to say intentional, but it veer it like it's a sharp turn. Yeah, it's it very makes right sharp. Into that, um, 
I'm like, it's right like I'm bridge, going this direction uh, and one of the, I'm moving uh, forward. The legs there of, right, right. And, I'm and, and, turning and then, that way and then yes. I'm going to move forward. Yes, and then it, but, but the thing about it is we see the ship moving. They're trying to tell us that they had no propulsion. We clearly see this ship turning. Okay, so the bottom of it, and then all of this comes down. Wait. Yeah, that's a that's a good point there, uh, Rochelle. Because if if they were looking for they were if they were looking for max maximum, let me let me pause this. If they were looking for maximum collateral damage, they would have done it. You know, at a, at a, a different point in day. And, and a couple. Of, uh, I'm glad I have you maritime folks down in here. You know, the size of the ship. You're absolutely right, Mitch. Because we've all been on. We've all done a med, med floats. We've all been on on cruisers and destroyers and. Um, uh, um, uh, what do you call them things aircraft carriers and you just can't you know it's not like just driving down the street where you can pull it and pull the wheel to the left and pull the wheel to the right and all but this the the ship will adjust to that no it takes a minute you know they're gonna if i remember correctly when they start doing maneuvers and they tell you uh they st the horn goes off correct me if i'm wrong on this uh fellas but the horn goes off and they tell you maneuvers and they they, they, they make an announcement that the ship is about to make a a, a, a turn to the left or uh, we're about to turn the ship to the port side or we're about to turn the turn the ship to the uh, starboard side am i correct full full uh full of heads or uh, all the head full or all the head back Oh, you know what? And then the next question, what, who, or is, in, do anyone have any sound? Was there any sirens? Were there any announcements? Because Captain, he got a microphone, you know. That, that's, that's, yeah. that's a good, that's another good question too. You know, uh, of course we know that there's a, a cameras on the bridge. So uh, I wonder if any of the cameras or um, a sound activate, you know, that do they pick up different sounds and things like that? And you never know, but I think a lot of this footage that, that, that we're seeing actually came from uh, cameras that were in the area, you know, uh, traffic cameras. Yeah. Cause there would be, you know, um, horns, and I know there's propellers at the bottom. That was a heck of a turn. I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that was a heck of a turn. Right. right. That's one. That was one <laughs> hell of a turn for a ship to say it did not have power. And it was full. Uh, it, you know, it was loaded. Right. So and, and think see, about the, yeah. And that's why that's why I wanted to get your guys' opinion of it first. So it said, was remember when I said, well, if they hadn't turned the ship, the ship would have gone just straight on out. It would have never hit the pylon. Mm. It had to be a turn, a sharp turn. We saw it. <laughs> yeah, that was sharp. That was very sharp. It's like, okay, I'm gonna turn, and then I'm gonna go forward. It, it's not even like I'm just gonna keep turning. Right. <laughs> It was like right. I'm turn, and now right. I'm gonna go forward. <laughs> Absolutely. Wow. Minded, so-called contributors, commentators, pundits—they all say, "Oh, they, they, don't, don't try to say no, no, no." Well, if 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 we don't investigate, if we don't look into things, if we don't understand problems by looking at it from multiple perspectives, there's no way to resolve these things. Here we're going to see some more uh, foot. Some action. I think this is actual um, uh, one of the, what they call the one of the port cams. Oh no! Actually, what this footage is, this is the aftermath of it. Someone actually went out with a drone, and this is a flyover of the of of the after, aftermath of after the ship, because you can see where the ship is is there. But again, when you look at the amount of space that this ship had to successfully navigate this waterway without hitting anything you'll have to ask yourself why did it hit this pylon because remember what we see underwater right here and right now folks it wouldn't have been underwater it would have been high enough up that the bridge would go not because there's no drawbridge here so it would have been high enough that a ship would have been easily to, to go under it here's another major area another gap that there was no reason for the the ship to hit the pylon. This was a pretty long. This is a pretty massive bridge. 
I had heard reports that there was some construction going on. And yeah, they said I like that, to know yeah. what kind of construction. Right. They, they say that the 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 um that the, the, there was some constructors working on the road, um, working on fixing potholes. Okay. We could see that because I mean, some some you want to avoid as much traffic as you can, so you wouldn't do you wouldn't you would pick optimal times to try and fix the road, less traffic, you know, less uh, less backup. I can understand that, but still, you know, you, you, I don't see any. Well, we we can't see it from there, but you know, I wish I we would have had a a before and after picture of that where we could actually see what there was any spotlights on the bridge because I didn't see them. Them cars was whipping past there pretty fast for except for there to be some folks working on that bridge. Don't you think so? Yeah, and I'm wondering um, which end was they working on right. Which end? Right. Curious about that. Was uh, also as far as the construction, was it only planned for that day or is this a continuation of something they were already working on? Yes, that's a, that's another good thing. But as you can see there, uh, Rochelle, there's no real current here to speak of this water is pretty calm yeah you know, and no waves gonna move that no. back like that 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 no mm -mm. no that was like something up under it steering it because yeah. i know there's propellers at the bottom up under it i know that i don't know how many don't don't know all of that but that was almost as something turn the back of that <laughs> i'm sorry yeah, it was like that, right. that it was, was more the motion the motion right. to it, me was in the back it wasn't even the front it was the back <laughs> right it, it just it just seemed like the whole ship just just kind of took a, a quick um uh, I, I would say uh, uh, angle wise i would say we took about like a 15 to 20 degree turn like you're going into an off ramp you know, when you come into a highway, when you're getting off a freeway and there's like mm -hmm. an off ramp that you got to turn, you know, just a little bit to go onto what uh, um, uh, a street, city street or whatever. Mm -hmm. It seemed that's what this, this boat was. But but then again, you know, it couldn't have been too many uh, hazardous materials or flammable materials on the ship because I don't see any fire damage. As we're looking yeah. at this drone picture here, and again, mm -hmm. the seas around look pretty calm. I mean, if you didn't know better, if I stopped this, you would think this was a still picture. Yeah, and um, how did they um, rescue the people, or how you know how did they get the people that was on the ship off? I'm kind of curious about that. Yeah, that's, that's another that good thing. Use. Because right? normally another... there will always be somebody recording. You know, they want to get the footage, but we haven't seen any rescue teams or anything. Now, now earlier, uh, Mr. Mitchell, you had put something down there. I think you said something about a, a, a harbor captain. Explain that. Is this is this is this someone that they pick up, or is he is he on the? Or does he go to the boat himself? I, I, how do how do what uh, explain the, the harbor captain? But, but again, folks, as you can see, look, the, the water is pretty calm. And why I say it's pretty calm, because you can see the other, um, I guess, if you want to call it tread marks of different boats that's been in the area. And uh, here you can, uh, if I can pause it, I wish I could uh, zoom in on a little bit. But if uh, there was a heavy current, let me mm -hmm. stop that. If there was a heavy current, we could all we could also see that you know at least the water moving around the structure that's in the water, but we don't see none of that. Right. Hmm. Good evening, I'm Catherine Couric. A strong earthquake rocked the San Francisco. Uh, hey, not, Katie. Dinners. The odd one at your. I messed up that, folks. Hold on. Let me go back. Let me go back. I got it. Let me go back and push the wrong button. <laughs> that was Katie her, Courage. <laughs> her, her name was Catherine Courage back in the day. Now she's Katie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just call her Kate. <laughs> Katie. <laughs> These folks don't know. Sometimes the internet is forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Katie Courage. 
<laughs> but the footage that we're going to run into, uh, it was, uh, I remember earlier, Shaw was talking about the, um, uh, the earthquake in San Francisco. Now, yes. this earthquake was pretty powerful. Okay. okay. Uh, okay. Damage, uh, uh, it cost millions and millions and millions of dollars in damage. And for those of you in, and that's in the Bay Area, you know it took quite some time for that area to be cleaned up, especially uh, um, a Sixth Street Bridge. Because, I, of course, I lived in the Bay Area myself for a while. So the Sixth Street Bridge, it took a while. I think I went to California in, I want to say, in the early 90s. And it was like maybe 95, 96 before that uh, particular uh, uh, path to the, to the Bay Bridge was open again. A strong earthquake rocked the San Francisco Bay Area just moments ago. 6.9 is what we're hearing. 6.9. 6.9 earthquake in San Francisco. And it still did not demolish the Bay Bridge. Did not demolish the Golden Gate Bridge did not demolish uh, the uh, Cartinas Bridge. But a ship traveling probably about 10, 15, 20 nautical miles took down a whole bridge. To their knees. In 1989, the Loma Prieta earthquake sent a deadly shockwave across Northern California. And from the- See, let me go back just to see that. I didn't mean to look at you though, Jose. Did I get it this time? Let me see. California. And of course, California is not the only state subject to earthquakes. Take a look at this map of the United States and the earthquake zones. The San Francisco quake demonstrates that you can never prepare enough. But a quarter century later, how much preparing really happened after the panic died down? This was a wake up call, but I think a lot of people have gone back to sleep. It was a fabulous October day. The weather was spectacular. Uh, the whole city was excited. The Battle of the Bay continues. Just after 5 p.m. on October 17, 1989, baseball fans across the country tuned in to see the San Francisco Giants face the Oakland A's in a broadcast that would soon go down in television history. The Oakland A's take. We were just driving into the parking lot at Candlestick Park when we felt the earthquake. There was a state of confusion. All of a sudden it hit. I didn't know where I was for five seconds. I still feel like throwing up right now. The game will be postponed. The aspect leaves in an orderly fashion. Police officers came to me and said, Mr. Mayor, we've got to take you to the command post downtown uh, because the uh, Bay Bridge has fallen in. There on television were scenes from helicopters showing the upper deck had fallen. Again, folks, an earthquake measuring 6.9 on the Richter scale did not bring down this man-made structure. A ship probably weighing a couple tons, managed to take out a bridge that's been built since 1975. One from one hit of it. Does that make sense to y'all? An earthquake did not tear this bridge down. In 89, before they were talking, talking about retrofitting different bridges and stuff, did not knock this bridge down. You see what, what went, what collapsed. Not the bottom part. And also, the, if you don't know about San Francisco, a lot of San Francisco is what they call, on, as they say, on shaky ground. It means like when an earthquake comes, it's like, have you ever put uh, ice and cookies in a blender and you start seeing it turns into like a little uh, uh, kind of like a mud mixture, sure? You know what I'm talking about? Uh-huh. Yes. That's, that's what happens to the ground during an earthquake. Okay. So imagine... Even a 6.9 earthquake did knock this bridge down. I, I know, I, I know, I'm, I keep saying this, but uh, I'm trying to conflate the two. You're trying to equate the two. Yeah, I get what you're saying. You're saying one beam from a, a powerless ship. Yes. Did the damage that it did when you had a earthquake? Mother Nature. 
Right. You got Mother Nature shaking up the earth, the entire earth <laughs> in that area, and you didn't get that right. much damage. So I, I right. get what you're saying. Exactly. Because he, let's face it, impact was just in one area. And the earthquake, everybody's shaking. And the impact also was from a powerless. Powerless. Let's let's use that word, powerless ship, according to them. Okay. Let's continue. On into the lower deck. The shaking registered a magnitude 6.9, the biggest quake the Bay Area had seen since the great San Francisco earthquake of 1906. Shut off the gas, shut off electricity, store water. Coverage of the Bay Bridge collapse, fires in San Francisco's Marina District, and a collapsed viaduct along Oakland's 880 freeway dominated newscasts for days. Out of the 63 people killed in the quake, 42 died after the elevated section of roadway fell down. I don't know how the hell we're going to get them out, okay? We have one woman who's unconscious waiting from the head. The earthquake took its name from Loma Prieta Mountain, about 60 miles south of San Francisco, where scientists pinpointed the event's epicenter. Nearby towns in Santa Cruz County saw 16,000 homes and businesses damaged or destroyed in the quake, far more than in San Francisco. See? She said, this is my point. Can you can, uh, say something? Let me see if I can hear you now, bro. All right. Can you hear me now? There you go. Yes. There you go. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Now, see, this good, is my point. Okay. This, this, here's, here's what I was talking about earlier. And I'm glad you made it back for this part. Okay. Mother Nature, an earthquake, did not bring down the Bay Bridge, the Golden Gate Bridge, the Carquinez Bridge, with all that damage, but you telling me that one cargo ship, say it again, Shaw, with no power. Powerless. <laughs> powerless, there it is. <laughs> well, could take out that entire bridge? I believe it can. And I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Okay. All Let's right, I'm going to tell you why. Because California is known for earthquakes. So yeah. when they design everything in California, including buildings, houses, um, everything, bridges, underpasses, overpasses, they built them to withstand earthquakes. Now, ah. depending on how freeze, depending on how stop right there. Stop right there. <laughs> okay. Stop right there. They did not start, they did not make it mandatory to retrofit bridges until after this Loma Perina earthquake. Exactly. It might, they did not make it. So you see what I'm saying? But they did. But right. when you think about the fact that they're in Maryland, okay? Now, keep in mind, you have to understand something, okay? And I'm going to use this as a reference. Okay. I, I was a truck driver, like semi-truck driver for 17 years. Seriously. And I've seen the impossible become possible because when things happen, it happens. And with you being in the military music, you know what I'm saying. If it, anything that can go wrong, definitely can. Yeah. And I believe that, yeah, they lost power. I believe that they tried to uh, when the game power, they tried to steer it and it lost power again. It's playing obsolescence. But, and if you don't know what that means, I will explain it. But um, it's also the fact that, you know, this vessel came from another country. So they don't have the strict standards that we have here. Like, look at the situation with Boeing. When the, um, the window popped off the airplane and almost sucked the guy out that was sitting next to it. And they mm -hmm. had to land. You know what I'm saying? It's playing obsolescence. It's greed. It's playing and and it's about getting them goods here. And, and because that's the thing. hey, Rogue C, how you doing? Good. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And I, I, I agree with absolutely with that. Uh, 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 said, and that's the part. That's going to be the last part of what we're going to get to the uh, the long standing implications of what this bridge collapse means. 
Now, I don't I don't know how much uh, uh, ready what you what you saw earlier, but this ship was a ship that should not have been in the water. Exactly. And I also believe that they should have had checkpoints, whereas they could have inspected the ship before it continued further. Well, I, I think they did. They did. In 2023, um, the, Ch the Chilean uh, government said that the ship wasn't uh, wasn't up to standards. And I think um, in 2019, uh, another uh, another report came out about the ship that says that it, it, it that, that its hull itself was not you know seaworthy. So it, all the all the signs were there that this, this is a ship that, that shouldn't have been it shouldn't have been had it shouldn't have been making any attempts to carry anything. But it's about greed. It's about greed, and. These international vessels, like for real, I, I believe, and this is my personal belief, that grab money. Yeah. Look the other way. <laughs> okay. You know, I got it. I got it. I got it. Fact in this. Yeah, you're right. My my fault there. I forgot I have to, you know, uh, I'm, I'm talking to my Marine Corps buddies. You know, sometimes I forget I'm in the, uh, I, uh, when you guys come around, I forget that I got to, a part myself in the military and the civilian world. I bothers you when I say boat. I know that. <laughs> it's <a> ship. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Cargo ship. It's a ship. Okay, Mr. Rochelle, I got you. <laughs> there might have been some migrants on that uh, boat. That <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Jose and the whole clan might have been on there. You never know how they might get hey. away for nine grand. <laughs> let's let's get did they ever did they ever say where the ship originated from before you start no they didn't they, they didn't i don't think they did because that's important too but, but let me see. yeah it, yeah it is <laughs> definitely is uh oh let's go most of the people who died died in older buildings as the full extent of the damage became clear coverage soon turned to how to fortify structures against future quakes okay folks this next clip that we're going to look at and we're going to look at bridges that were that are not were not built stable that were not uh, that that should have never been built that should that should have been either uh built better or retrofitted better these are actual bridges that have collapsed in the United States over the years. Now you take a look at some of these bridges and act like ask yourself, do I want to go on another bridge again? <laughs> I've had enough. I'm sick of seeing and touching both sides of things. Sick of being the bridge for everybody. Nobody can talk to anybody without me, right? I explain my mother to my father, my father to my little sister, my little sister to my brother, my brother to the white feminist, the white feminist to the black church folks, the black church folks to the ex-hippies, the ex-hippies to the black separatists, the black separatists to the artists, and the artists to the parents of my friends. Then I've got to explain myself to everybody. I do more translating than the UN. Forget it. I'm sick of filling in your gaps. Sick of being your insurance against the isolation of your self-imposed limitations. Sick of being the crazy at your holiday dinners, the odd one at your Sunday brunches. I am sick of being sole black friend to 34 individual white folks. Find another connection to the rest of the world. Something else to make you legitimate, some other way to be political and hip. I will not be the bridge to your womanhood, your manhood, your humanness. I'm sick of reminding you not to close off too tight for too long. Sick of mediating with your worst self on behalf of your better selves. Sick of having to remind you to breathe before you suffocate your own full self. Forget it. Stretch or drown. 
evolve or die. You see, it's like this. The bridge I must be is the bridge to my own power. I must translate my own fears, mediate my own weaknesses. I must be the bridge to nowhere but my own true self. It's only then I can be useful. Uh, someone just, uh, I guess, decided to put a little poem along with uh, with those different bridges. But bridges from Seattle to South Carolina, folks. Uh, either they were either wind or waves that had these bridges rocking like that. Now we can go all the way back to the 1900s. You don't think that these folks would by now know there's a certain way to construct a bridge to make it safe for general public use. This bridge here was built in 1975. So you mean to tell me since 1975, no one's checked the structure of this bridge, the cables, the columns, to see if there was any, um, uh, I guess, any erosion or any cracks or any loose bolts or whatever. And that's another good point that you brought up there, Mr. Mitchell. Why did this ship, as big as it is, only have 220 crew members? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Thoughts, anyone? Well, I, I just say that I'm quite sure that when they designed the bridge, they didn't design it with the intention that somebody was going to hit the pillars. Yeah, but you have to. I understand that. Say but you have to you have to when you design this something you have to uh add the human error aspect of it i agree you have i to. totally agree with that what if this happens what if that happens you have to uh you know for weather for man-made disasters and natural disasters and again well as quick as that bridge drop me, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, and I think Shaw, you can uh, you can attest to that. But it's, it's hard not to hard not to look at this side eye. Go ahead, sir. I mean, like I I agree. I mean, you know, but I think that the actual fault should lay with the designers because the thing about um, the transportation aspect of it. I mean, when you consider everything, cars, trains, planes, and automobiles, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> everything at some point in time crashes into yes. something. Planes fall out the sky sometimes. Uh, trains uh, derail sometimes. Trucks get stuck on tracks all the time. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all the time. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And, and, you know, it's not funny, but at the end of the day, um, you gotta, I, I, I feel that you have to look at the aspect of what part of the country is in, because in San Francisco, uh, California, you know, they get a lot of shipping and receiving. Uh, I think this was like a, what, a river? This is a major, this is a, a, a as far as uh, to equate this to highway and river, this is a major thorough, a, a major thorough thing here. This river goes directly into the Chesapeake Bay. And we all know. Okay. And does it does it actually go into any of the Great Lakes? Yes. Okay. Yes. That's see, because I don't know. You know what I'm saying? So, but um, what I'm saying is, is that there's always going to be human error on the side of things that move compared to things that sit still. And I'm quite sure when they designed it, they was like, "Oh, ain't nobody going to hit this." So, because I mean, if you look how wide. The that, the pillars right, are right. You know that's what I'm saying? Point. Right. She said that's exactly my point. There was enough space from from one pillar to the other pillar that if the boat hadn't made any sudden changes or any left moves or right moves, it would have just gone straight on out. The worst thing that would have happened, it would have ran aground. And I agree with that. And that's what it should have done. Right. If they knew they had problems, they should have aimed for the the ground. At exactly. least that way. The most right. that you have to do is you you just have to pull it pull it back, and right. it might even exactly. survive structural right. damage. So I agree right. with that. 
get a, get a couple barges and, and try and, and either pull it out. If not, if you can't do it, then they'll bring in a salvage team, offload all the off all, all of all of the uh the containers on there and then go from there. Now on everything, uh like I said, I drove a truck for 17 years, so I have pulled containers mm -hmm. and I can tell you that those ships are very heavy because yes, the containers, like seriously, um, and I'm gonna tell you, um, I used to have to go get a chassis. If I knew what load I was picking up, I had to go get a chassis and right. then I would have to park under this uh, this lift. And they it, it would be so high and it's a guy sitting at the top and he would have to literally bring it down. Right. Just so right. that you can lock it, you know what I'm saying? And you sit in the truck and you say, man, I hope this dude do not drop this container it's, because you know, this, right. It's coming down. That's with a it. Vengeance. It's coming right. down with a vengeance. That's so right. when you look at that and then you look at the fact that, you know, there are hundreds of containers on these ships. These ships are very heavy. Thousands. So yes, maneuvering, maneuvering these things got to be difficult in a tight spot. Like in an open ocean, I don't think it's no problem. Yeah. But in a narrow uh, situation like that, I think that, um, yeah, and I agree with the guy that was on MSNBC earlier, like I said earlier, that it would have been hard for them to maneuver that thing once it lost power the first time and then it gained power for a few seconds. I don't think, but I feel that with it being so wide and they would have came. And if you look at the channel, the channel is pretty wide. So they could have came deep. up the middle, and, and even if it lost anything. power, right? But the, see, see, that's the part. That's the point of the whole thing. Said when they did lose power the first time before they made this this drastic change, mm -hmm. they could have been, kept going straight, and it would have it would would have hit nothing. Was it an overcorrection? Was it pilot error? Did, was it was the ship's gimbals not working correctly? Where they thought they they had to compensate uh, to turn the wheel to the right or to the left, those are questions that those are legitimate questions, especially for for those of us that's been on on ships before. I've never been on a ship before, so I couldn't say. Yep. Let's continue. So, go ahead, go ahead, sir. No, I'm just saying I couldn't say. So I've never been on a ship, so I couldn't okay. say what needed to be done. But I'm from the outside looking in. I agree with that part, like right. real. Right. Now, the reason why I say why this leads to conspiracy theories, how many states in the United States is landlocked, folks? Y'all know? 48. Landlocked meaning there's no seaport around. No, I don't know at all. It's 27. 27 states 27? are landlocked. Yeah. The majority wow. of them, in the, a, a lot of them are in that area up there, the Delaware area. In all those areas you'll, you'll see what i mean so again uh, me being in the military from from a high school on back you know there's some things I, I, that stayed in my brain housing group so the first thing that i thought of was some of the naval battles that i seen to where they would literally crash ships or sink ships in the harbor so that other boats could not deliver goods and services to landlocked countries that's how they starved germany out that's how they did the uh, folks over uh what's the, what's the place that they're fighting now over at gaza yeah yeah so if and that's a whole another topic but uh, yeah right right so the, uh, I, we could go on for, for all day for this with, with this one particular thing that i'm about to slide into here but think about this remember earlier a couple months ago the truck driver said, we ain't taking shit into New York no more. Uh-uh. <laughs> you remember that? Sounds I do. Familiar. If Donald do. Trump is not elected, if Donald Trump is taken off the ballot, we ain't taking shit up to New York. Uh-oh. Yeah. Truck Reason being because of the uh, the the lawsuit that the state of the, the, the state of New York filed against Donald exactly. Trump where he owes almost a half billion dollars. So yeah, exactly. I know. Exactly. So let's let's continue this now. You you telling me Donald Trump don't have sycophants? 
<laughs> Say it. <laughs> Say it. <laughs> Are you trying to tell me that Donald Trump don't have some fans that will go out there and tear up a bill? Wait a minute. Did I mention January 6th? Hey, you know what? I, I, I'm looking at it like this. That's a whole nother topic as well, because to be honest with you, this man is getting away with it. Literally. Murder. Murder. Right. Uh-oh, he just came in, <laughs> came in popped in on us. <laughs> because if that would have been any of us, believe me, we'd have been Mr. locked away and gone for good a very long time ago. Gone. Hey, then, uh, Mr. Trump, you came to give us a visit? You heard us talking about you? Hello, Stevie. It's you again. I, I, first of all, I first of all, Mr. Trump, I'm not gonna call Apple call you President Trump. I'm gonna call you Mr. Trump just because I don't I don't like calling you by your first name. Uh, what's up with them sneakers, bub? Did you get a pair? I know you got some. <laughs> you know no, you want to be cool like me. No, sir. Hey, uh, one more question there, Mr. Trump, since you uh, jumped on in our, our, our stream here. Um, are you gonna be able to pay this fine? Did you donate? You know, I had a bobblehead. <laughs> My point exactly is saying, so are you trying to tell me that Donald Trump don't have some sick offense? Now, hey, look at all this. I'm going to say is, all I'm going to say is, it could be possible that it could be a link. Yeah. Okay. Now, look at this here. Say this is, say this, this red arrow, this red line that you see here, right? Say that's the bridge, right? Okay, you sink ships all around that. Behind in the green area there is those landlocked, uh, whatchamacallit, that depend on this seaport for all the goods that are coming in. There's no way to get to, no, there's no way to, to resupply these cities, these particular states. The only way that you can supply them is through rail or truck because there's no seaport. Right now, if the ships can't come in to drop off their goods and services, who's it going to affect more? Those people that are near the coast or those people that are landlocked that have no way of getting any goods at all? Okay, no goods at all. Okay. Yeah. No service. I mean, it's it's the same thing that Russia did to. Uh, exactly. It's the same thing when they uh when they went in that port and they blew up all those bridges That's right. and took over that port so that right. so that Ukraine could not move grains and other goods from that port. That's Russia right. cut them off. That's right. Absolutely. If you can't feed your people, you if you can if you don't if you don't have gas. If you don't have uh, the, the general necessities of life, if you're dependent on these, because those are containers and those containers have what? Goods. All the goods and services you need. That's, That's right. Everything from shoes to purses, to coats, to hats, cars could even be on there. Right? Yeah. And I've heard no reports of what was on there. Right. What was I mean, the thing about it is, is that uh, you're not going to know everything else because when you get container ships, everything be on those container ships. So that's everything yeah, from electronics everything. to clothing to grains right. to everything, right? right. And, everything. Uh, and and some other stuff that I'm not going to mention on on here because yeah. I didn't haul a lot yeah. of stuff. There might be there might be some migrants on there. They might be smoking that Mary Jane. No, the smart thing, look, this is the thing, and I'm going to tell y'all the truth. The smart thing for anybody to do, if you want to come into the United States legally, is become a crew member on one of them cargo ships that's coming that's to the it. U.S. That's it. Because you don't have to cross the border, and once you get here and you get off the ship, they can't track you. They can't they track you. Right. And, they, and they can't come get you. Either. As long as the ship is out of international waters, they can't, start, they can't come and get you. Exactly. So that's the smartest thing to do. But let me, let me address this. Mr. Rochelle says uh, 23, 213 million pounds moving at 10 miles an hour. No power, no steering equals bridge down. What y'all, what's, what's say to y'all to that? Of course. 
And then you got to think, it's not even on the side of the surface, it's on water. So without without dropping the anchor, how are you going to stop it? That's so fast, though, with no power. That's the only thing, the pushback I have is the no power. So how are you pushing ahead? Some, 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 somebody say it again. That's fast with no power. And, and, right. And my, my thing is, my, my whole thing is, that whole scenario right there, Mr. Rochelle, you're absolutely right about it. If it had no power or nothing else. But we saw the we saw the boat, the ship. We saw the ship turning. Did we not? Yeah. We saw the ship lights come on. Did we not? Not once, but twice. Did we not? So at some point in time, yeah, I know. It, could, it probably couldn't slow itself down. It's, you said forward momentum. I'll give it. I'll even give it forward momentum there, uh, uh, Bob Rowe. I sure will. But again, like I said, cause and effect. Yeah, but without the anchor, I mean, how can you really slow a ship down without an anchor? You 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 really can't. I mean, if, if the if the if the if the water is moving fast, that's going to add a little bit more momentum to it. But we can all see that this is this is not a heavy uh, tidal. A place that would a, a rip a rip current. That's what I'm looking for. Doesn't have a heavy rip current hmm. that will propel the ship any further. So, but that's what I'm saying. If the ship didn't turn, eventually it would have continued going on out to sea, or would have ran aground in the marsh. Okay, so which way was it actually going? Cause see, like I didn't get all of that. Was it going? It was headed out to sea. Leaving? Yeah, it was oh, leaving. So it it, it loaded up and then it right. was leaving. Right, right. It, it was headed out. See, I didn't know that. Right. But again, this is what I'm talking about. This naval blockade, folks, this has been an effective measure of starving out a country for years. Eons. A very effective member me measure. Now, uh, again, again, we can add to the conspiracy theory about folks saying, "Well, you know, if if the people in Delaware, if the folks in uh, all these different uh, landlocked uh, places can't get their which can't, can't can't get their goods and services, can't get their toilet tissue, their rice, their coffee, their medical supplies, their this and their that." Hmm. I'm just saying. It lends credence. credence. British naval blockade of Germany during World War I stance is one of the most formidable maritime strategies in modern history. As the conflict unfolded, Britain sought to sever Germany's access to vital resources and cripple its economy. This article delves into the origins, execution, and impact of the British naval blockade on Germany and its far-reaching consequences for the course of the war. Origins of the blockade. The concept of a naval blockade emerged in the early stages of World War I. Britain, possessing the world's most formidable navy, recognized the potential of cutting off Germany from its overseas trade routes. This strategy aimed to starve the central powers of resources, gradually weakening their war effort. Okay. Now, Sid, you lived in Georgia before, right? Yes. Okay. Georgia's a landlocked state. There's no yes. ports in Georgia. There's no there's no ports in Georgia. Am I correct? Well, so, well and the part of Georgia that you live in, up in uh, Atlanta and all that. There's no ports over there. If you get to, not until you get towards Savannah, right? Uh, Savannah is Southern Georgia. Let me see. What's behind? What's it's below Southern Georgia? Georgia? Is it Florida? Yeah, South Georgia. Yeah, yeah. Just so you get into okay. the area of Savannah, Georgia, and the Carolinas, and things like that. I so, think I think Georgia touches the coast of uh, the Gulf of Mexico. At some point, I'm not sure, but uh, think, it touches water somewhere. I think it's Tybee Island. Um, um, let's see, it's around that area, of course. Uh, uh, Savannah has the riverfront, and uh, Savannah has a, as a as a port too. It's not a deep water port, but it does have mm -hmm. a, a, some similar. Yeah, similar port. so it touches water because there's an island that that is uh, a part of Georgia that uh, I can't think of the name of it, but. That yeah, uh, all the rich people went to to yeah. uh, make some type of laws and stuff. Yeah, uh, back in the forties. Yeah, so, That's exactly. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. So now th that's uh, I bring that up for a reason. Okay, you block all you you stop all the services from coming into Georgia. How can you do that? You block off Interstate sixteen. You block exactly. off Interstate twenty, right? Yep. 
no yep. goods and services can come into. How long do you think the city of Atlanta will survive in six or How do you think uh, the city of Atlanta will be in six months with a naval blockade? Well, it depends. They have to do the blockade from the north as well. But no, it wouldn't be long. Right. It wouldn't have very long. Be long. Right. No. So I, I get this. I get to say this. What a better way to hold America hostage by saying, OK, we can clean this up quickly, but y'all got to leave folks alone. And y'all know the folks that I'm talking about. So okay, you can we can go all kind of all, all we can roll all down the street with different conspiracy theories. The bottom line to it is there's questions that need to be answered. It's questions about why was this ship, now that we know that it was not seaworthy, that it shouldn't have been on the water, why did it make this turn? Why did it hit that? Why was it that time at that time of night? Was it a, was it strategic? Why did this ship only have 20 crew members? Why was those six people up on that bridge? Why was there not that many cars on that bridge at that time of morning? All those questions need to be asked. So let me ask you a question. Sure. You think that this was a strategic... Uh, I think a so. A strategic uh, yeah, I think it hit was. to yeah. test our I infrastructure. I think I think it was just to show. Uh, that's a good and another good point. But I think that's to show the, the vulnerability, the vulnerability of our infrastructure. I think so. I, I, listen, you, they, you can, guys can say all you want about Biden, but you know uh, I, I don't wish the man no ill harm. But Father Time gonna catch up to him sooner or later. Hey, I believe it's gonna catch up to Trump too, but right. I will say this, okay? Uh, if this is if this is the uh, the road that you're taking. Did you read my post inside the chat room that day when I said something about Trump? Mm -hmm. I, I, you have to remind me of it, brother. Okay, so this is my this was my point. Trump, I think, is kind of laying the groundwork because all right so let's say the election happens people like okay we're not voting for this for this dude he got all this going on he got this going on he got that going on so you know and we re-elect biden okay that only buys us more time because you know what happens look at how some of these republicans are acting and all it's going to take and to me i'm telling y'all all it's going to take is for one Republican to run for office for the presidency that is not going to do what Trump did. Because I live in rural Illinois. Like, seriously, it's a lot of Trump supporters around me. And they talk to me. And, you know, I don't argue with them, but I tell them the one thing that Trump do that he shouldn't do. He run his mouth. And he needs to shut up. If you're gonna do it, do it in silence. Like, uh, like uh, the rap song said, "Real bad." Uh, KRS said, once said it, "Real bad boys move in silence." You don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. That's exactly it. I, I think, and that's I exactly think, what Trump do. Yeah. So I, I think I think Sean heard me say this on several occasions. I would love to play poker with Trump because he tells his hand. Yeah. yeah. And the thing about it is, is that. He's laying the groundwork because what's going to happen is it's going to happen because there's people that want it. There's people that really want this country to be like North Korea and Russia. And then when they get like that, they're going to regret it, but it's going to be too late. Yeah, I, I think I think people have a um, I, uh, I, how do I say this? I think people have a, a false idea of what a dictator is. Because they've never lived under one. When you start getting all your rights and your and your uh, uh, you could be your whole family could be taken out just because you disagree with somebody. Uh, what's the what's the guy in Russia uh, that just uh, that was just killed in the uh, what's his name that they it was killed in the? I Russia know who you're talking about. I can't remember his name right off the top of my head, but I know exactly who you're so, talking about. Right. Those are the kind. Of, those those are the things that a dictator does, folks. It will put you to sleep literally but what a lot of people understand is okay and i'm gonna say this all right you got a lot of people that got a little money you got a lot of people that got money 
and you got a lot of people that got no money that bought into this okay and what they don't understand is is that at the end of the day it's all about wealth and power and what happens when you get somebody in there that's willing to take wealth and power they're going to take it from everybody it's like it's like a magnet you know what i'm saying you stick a magnet in a bowl full of screws guess what happened all the screws is gonna go to the magnet yeah okay you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. right. and that's what's gonna happen they are gonna that, drain the country right let me let me address this uh, uh comment right here uh, uh rod g uh welcome to the uh, uh chat there rod g uh he says uh you can still stir the ship without power just like a car can uh, yeah to a, cer- a certain extent I, I absolutely agree with you that you can and but according to what the published reports are, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, folks, here, down in the in the in the in the lounge or up here on the panel. Correct me if I'm wrong that they say that the ship could not steer itself because it did not have power. So which one is right? Can it steer itself without power? Because that's why I asked about the black smoke coming out. Now, is it is it a two power system? Does it have electric electronic power, and does it also have diesel power? Because you can also you can tell that was diesel smoke coming out of those engines. Oh yeah, definitely. So which one is it? Uh, did it have power? Did it have enough? It had enough power because I look, I look at it, and the whole time the ship was moving around, I always saw that column of black smoke coming out of it, even though when the I, lights went out. I kind of agree to disagree. I feel that once they lost power, um, they couldn't they couldn't sit the ship. I mean, you got to look at the weight factor. I mean, in a car. If you lose your power stand, yeah, it'd be hard. But if you pull hard enough, yeah, yeah you can get, you can still, still steer a car. Right. right. I, but I, I, you I, looking I, I, at and, and and then look at like look at it like this, okay? When it rains on the ground and you're driving a car, let's say um, hydroplaning. It's water. Yeah, you hydroplane. It's very difficult to steer a car when you hydroplane it. Right. You know, if you got water, if you got at least, and I'm not even saying a millimeter of water under your tires in the road, and them tires is not in contact with the road. Right, right. You, 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 you fish tail if you turn the wheel the wrong way, you going that way. That's that's the direction yeah. you're going in, and you right. can't stop it. Right. Even if you break, you can't stop it. I, I'll agree with that, but you know, uh, again, uh, me being around, be, me being living in in a, in a port city. Miss Charleston, me being in the military, being around, you know, uh, military vessels and boats and things like that. Actually, uh, when I was growing up here in my family, we had a little boat we should take out on, on the water over there. So I do know that part, uh, uh, the part, the part above the the boat. Correct me if I'm wrong, Double Dogs. There's a quite a, uh, quite a lot of the boat that's underwater. Mm-hmm, all right keel there's a part of the keel that's underwater that we don't see but it's also kind of slanted back a little bit right it's you know if you see a ship it's always kind of got that diagonal like a 45 degree angle to it whether it be a forward angle or backward angle so i'm thinking again part of the ship made contact with the with the uh pylons before another part of the ship so i think i don't think we can blame momentum no, I don't think we can get momentum as a, as the crucial factor as to why this bridge was taken down. I don't think that that with the, the way the design of this ship, if it was a square back ship, you know, like the old cars, I can understand that. But these these ships are kind of like at a at a horizontal kind of thing. So a part of the ship would have connected with the pylons before another part of the sh- front of the ship would. Would y'all agree with that? If you're looking at a sh- how a ship is. I mean, I don't know the structure of a ship, but uh, what I will ask is this, and I'm going to ask the question. Mm-hmm. How do you really slow a ship down? I mean, do you kick the motor in reverse and let the reverse uh, slow it down? Because if it's going forward and you're looking at the fact that it's in water and you put it in reverse, would that slow it down? Well, I mean, and if they uh, wasn't able to put it in reverse, could it actually slow down? Well, again, but the ship would have power. To, you know, if you've seen these old movies, that, you know, especially with those those movies that said all ahead for the war movies, it's all ahead full. 
uh, reverse power to a certain a certain amount. Uh, even on Star Trek, they can tell you you can reverse the engines. But again, you can have power. And also, if they tried to reverse the engines, you, we would we would have seen the water choppy behind it. You know what I'm saying? The propellers would have made the water go in a different direction. But if it had no power, then how could it do that? Exactly. So my point to again, my point to those folks that said that the ship didn't have any power. Where did the black smoke come from? Could have been from uh, trying to put it in reverse when the power came back on and it burnt the engine out. Could have been. I mean, I'm not a ship expert. I'm just asking questions, just no, like you I, are. I, so. No, no, me either. I know I've been on it, but you know the the inner workings of of you know how to run a ship. I'm all a, I'm I'm quite the novice at. Believe me, uh, some of the things I say, I'm not. Uh, of course, I'm kind of. I'm gonna say I'm guessing at. But a lot of, of a lot of what I know about ships, you know, is it's not enough to, to say definitively. Yeah, it happens that way. But I just know just from my personal experience of being around boats. I, I, I remember, you know, my pops uh, driving the, the the boat that we had, and it had an outboard motor on it. You know, uh, he could put he could put it in reverse, or he could go, go forward with it, or he can put it in neutral while the boats, you know, it actually. You know moving but not at a fast pace you don't want to go of course you don't want to be hauling uh hauling hauling ass down in the, in the waterway and all of a sudden throw the boat in reverse no i think that would do more harm than good but uh, can it be done yes i'm sure it can be but i think it all the, the boat has to be has to have some kind of power behind it and but these folks okay the boat had no the ship had no power okay because i just thought about something and um and I'm going back to the uh, the sabotage theory, okay? Do you think that um, this was deliberately done so that more people could get hurt or killed? Then what happened? Well, I, I don't I don't think this, I don't think this was about people. I don't think this was about collateral damage. I think this was I think this is about what's what's the economy. I think this is you got to look at it again. 27 states is landlocked. The Chesapeake is a major, as like I-26. What's the, what's the major uh, interstate in your area? Uh, where I'm at and uh, me being in Illinois, I can name a few. Uh, 57, because I'm right off of uh, Interstate 57, 94, 294, 394. Right. Um, right. So imagine. Uh, so, yeah. So, so imagine. All those 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 trucks that's coming into these port cities to pick up these goods to bring them back to landlock uh, uh, cities and towns and states. Imagine when they go to the port that, that particular port now because it's going to be a while before that's cleaned up. They now have to go where either to another port or to another state altogether, right? Yeah. So imagine. I agree. If they lock up, if they if they knock down, and if they shut down Interstate seventy seven going into Charlotte for some reason, and that was a major thoroughfare to go through. There. That's how that's how I look at this. This was a major thoroughfare that they sh that they shut down. So to me, I'm leaning to uh, I'm leaning to conspiracy theory for two reasons. Well, th for three reasons: the speed that that bridge came down. Now, from now, what I know that the boat should have never been in the water. And I got to go back to way back when, when these folks said, we are, we're going to do something to this country to make sure that Donald Trump gets back in office. If he doesn't, all hell going to break loose. That's just my theory. And I partially agree with that. Yes, I do. Because I don't put nothing past none of these uh, right wing politicians. Um, right. I, I feel if they, that if they storm the Capitol, what would stop them from knocking down a bridge? But this is the thing. <laughs> Just imagine, and I and I pose this question, right? And I pose this question. But let's say this was Barack Obama, okay? That did this. That did what Trump is doing. Mm hmm. You know how fast that brother would have been locked up, key thrown away. Uh, of course, it would, it would, we wouldn't be talking about this no more. We, 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 <laughs> would, we look, wouldn't look, be talking look. about. Like, but right. this, this is the thing. This is the thing, and I stand on this. This is if people don't believe in white privilege, 
This is white privilege at its finest. For real. The mere fact that, you gotta, <laughs> the mere fact that he could go into court and hold public, uh, hold a press conference outside the courthouse. In the, no, in the, the in, mere in the fact. Atrium. In the, the mere in, in fact. The now, I'm going to tell you, the mere fact that he can appeal everything that happens in the trial. Come on. When has that ever happened? Well, again, but is this is the thing that this is the thing that, that people don't understand. Now that Trump delayed the president, just imagine I drug dealer get drug dealer get indicted. Not no more. Every time the judge rules something or the prosecutor brings something, hey, I'm just gonna appeal it. That's it. And they appeal that's it. That's the the, the precedent is set. What they should have did was they should have just said, okay, Trump, look, you know what I'm saying? We know what you're trying to do, bro, but we can't let you do it. Can't let you do it because it's going to open up the door. And what Trump don't understand is, and this is the thing why they won't rule on the immunity case, because if they say president's got immunity, then what happens if Donald Trump do win the presidency and Biden is in office and Biden said, well, look, I'm president's not, got I'm immunity. Right. I'm not leaving. <laughs> I ain't going me, nowhere. What you going to do about it? <laughs> right. Let me right. Let me address this right quickly. Hey, Rod. I think I think we did uh, uh, see a little bit of the footage earlier that you're, you're referring to. I'm not sure what the guy's name was. Might have been Dane, but uh, uh, I had pulled up some footage, uh, some uh, things oh, yeah. earlier. Where the particular um, the ship in question has actually has been involved in two incidents: one in 2019 and one, another one in tw as early as 2023. That the ship itself shouldn't have been on the water. Uh, it, it, it's uh, it was uh, deemed as a it had structural damage, and also uh, that the, the propulsion system of it, uh, as they say, uh, according to those those folks, uh, the powers that be, uh, they gave it a failing grade. So again, I'll ask myself, why was this ship? Instead of uh, instead of being in dry dock, being prepared, uh, being repaired, why was it able to uh, go out and connect and and and, and collect and, and get uh, supplies and carry off? Hey there, AB, how you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. How you been? Hey, GG. Nah, right it's not see. I do have right? an answer for that. I sure. do have an answer for that. Sure. And it's it's a logical answer. And. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I can only refer to my experience in the trucking industry mm -hmm. to this, okay? But when you have, and, and I'm going to tell y'all a true story, all right? For real. I had a truck. Um, I, you know, my boss gave me a truck. I said, hey, I need you to drive this truck. Problem was, truck, the air brakes on the trucks was shot. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to bring the truck. And at the time, you know, I, I was living in Illinois, but my job was in Wisconsin. So he wanted me to bring the truck back. But the problem was, was that he didn't want me to just bring the truck back. He wanted me to bring Lowe's back because the truck had to make money if it moved. Right. Now, keep in mind, that is the key phrase. Okay. So I'm going to tell y'all what happened. I'm tell y'all what happened. Um. He sent me to a place um, in this town called Romeoville, and I took the truck, and I had to swap trailers. So when I hooked the trailer to the truck, as soon as I took the, the the airlock off the trailer, the truck rolled right into a. You know how when you go to these little businesses, they have these ponds. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. truck rolled right into a pond. Just the truck. Because it didn't have no brakes, and the and the angle of the of the of the dock was yeah. just enough for it to start rolling. Yeah. yeah now, I if that. I would have just bought the truck back to Milwaukee, like he asked me to, none of that wouldn't have never happened. Right. No, and it's the it. same thing with these ships. If these ships is not moving, they're not making no money. Right, and, and that's so, exactly it. It, it, it had to come in. I'm sure it came. I'm sure it came in, shed and off, offloaded. Um, we're not going to just go, go back out with an empty ship because I think it was headed out to. Of course, it was going out to sea. I think it's next. Uh, I forgot where it said where its next destination. Exactly. So you got to look at it like this from a business aspect. The powers that be is looking at it like, hey, 
we ain't making no money if we bring this ship to a to a to a yard where it can be fixed. Right, right. We can't have that. So the yard may have been in Ecuador or Greece. I mean, we don't know. We don't know where the ship was headed. Yeah. But, but they was not gonna let that ship roll out with nothing on it because it don't make money for them. Right. I, I, but I understand that. So that's that's the that's the point uh, said. So that would also. Again, that would lean towards more of a conspiracy that, that would lean towards me because y'all know that was that this structs had structural damage, but in and and but just because of the all, almighty dollar, y'all decided to say, okay, let's send this ship out anyway. But I don't I don't see it that way. I think, yeah, the ship did hit uh, the, the pylon, but I just don't see no one no one's yet has convinced me. From what I've seen, from the footage that I've seen of other bridges collapsing, uh, looking at different earthquakes and other places that had uh, uh, bridges go going across them, it, it just, it's just, it's it's just hard for me to believe that that one ship could have brought that entire structure down. It's not like it. It's I, not I believe it because if you, like I said earlier, if you look at the the, the pillars that was holding that bridge up compared to that ship. That ship is massive compared to those pillars. And you got to think like this. And, and you've been around ships. Like, I've never been around a ship. But you got to think about how, how tall you are. And when you next to one of these ships and how big I'm they a, are. Right. I, I, it's, I'm a, I'm a, it's a, like a, the ant and the giant. I understand exactly what you said. Yes. If you've been on a, if you've been, if you've been on an aircraft carrier, what they call an aircraft carrier is a floating city. That's pretty much what. Yes. It is. And so when I worked at the airport, flight. when I was living in uh in Ohio, and I was working at the airport in Kentucky, and I was a tug driver, and I seen how massive these airplanes were. I seen airplanes so big, you wouldn't believe how big they were. Right. Like seriously. And when you stand next to one of these ships, I'm quite sure it's the same thing. And you know, like I said, uh, greed, man, greed is greed is an MF because, like I said, if when it comes down to it, you don't make money if them things is moving with our cargo. Same thing with trucks. Same thing if you are a um, a delivery driver. You know what I'm saying? If you're not delivering stuff, you don't make money. When you delivering stuff, you make money because you got cargo. You know what I'm saying? And I believe that uh, they probably knew that this this shit was messed up. But then you got to think about it like this: the company, how many ships do they actually have, and how many other ships may be in the same state of disrepair that's out there on the ocean right now. Yeah, that they are uh, legally, you know what I'm saying, moving around the world. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. But uh, again, that goes back to, uh, again, the, the infrastructure bill that Biden is supposed to put out there. It was supposed to catch things like that. Catch uh, uh, catch the, the, the bad roadways, to, to catch the, uh, the the bad ships, to actually even to catch some of the, the, the people who's, you know, who's just pretty much just sitting on their laurels, you know, it's out with the old, in with the new. Just, just my opinion on, but let's let's continue here. We're getting we're getting All closer right. to winding this down here. Effort. Legal and ethical controversies. The blockade raised significant legal and ethical questions. The British employed tactics such as mines, surface ships, and submarines to interdict neutral vessels carrying goods to Germany. These measures faced international criticism, leading to debates about the legality of such tactics under international law. Execution of the blockade. The blockade was executed through a combination of surface ships, submarines, and mines, particularly in the North Sea. British naval forces patrolled strategic choke points, intercepting and inspecting cargo ships suspected of carrying goods bound for Germany. Impact on the German economy. And that's what exactly what I mean. That particular area is, is strategic. It is a major. It's it's like it's it's strategic. I mean, look at look around. It goes to, to Chesapeake Bay, which goes into the Atlantic Ocean. And if you if you folks, if you pull up the map, uh, and if you look at this particular area in in its entirety, you will see how important that this waterway is. Very important to the to the economy of the United States. 
crucial to the economy of the United States. The blockade had a crippling effect on the German economy, with access to vital resources severely restricted. Industries such as manufacturing and agriculture began to suffer. The scarcity of raw materials led to shortages, skyrocketing prices, and widespread hardship. Civilian hardships and deprivation. German civilians bore the brunt of the blockade's impact. Food shortages and malnutrition became rampant, leading to widespread suffering and social unrest. The German government implemented rationing and sought alternative sources of sustenance. There it is. Wide, widespread chaos. We already the United States itself is already chaotic just by what's going on with Trump. Would you agree? It's already chaotic with the migrant situation. Would you agree? Now I agree. let's throw some, let's throw something else in the mix here. Now we can't get a we can't get a food, we can't get a gas, we can't get this, we can't get that, simply because the waterway is clogged up. Folks going hungry, that means the crime is going to rise. We ain't got to worry about the migrants because it's going to be United States citizen against United States citizen. Survival of the fittest. So can I throw the side topic in real quick? Sure. That I'm not going to, uh, but you know, you, you saying Trump and um, I just did a Google search because uh, I heard about it before, but uh, Trump's grandfather was German. Hmm. By the way. Yeah. And a businessman. Right. He was the one that built up the Trump fortune. Right. So, I mean, there's all kind of <laughs> all kind of sticks and pins. We could put into into this in, into this cake, you know, all kind of uh, different things. But to to me, as I said, and sure, y'all can chime in on this on any time that you want to. But I I think it's not it's not so much Trump, but it's the the um, powers that be. And Trump is just the, I guess the the head of the snake. Because he can't, he can't do I don't all think this he, by I don't himself. think he's the head of the snake. I think he's the one that was willing to lay the groundwork. Hmm. Trump would never look. This my this is my whole guess. Trump would never see the fruits of his labor at all. Yeah, I, I don't believe it. that. Yeah, if you can call it fruits, but you know when they say uh, the, the fruit of uh, grows, uh, the, the, the fruit that the bears, if it's from a bad tree, if it's, it's from a diseased tree, it, it's not edible. All right. It's not. It's not even about that. I think that they are grooming the next person that is going to be Trump-like, but will be a lot smarter. I think that Trump is doing everything, and you got to think about this. Okay, it's to the point now where when Trump do stuff, and we we just be like, okay, that's Trump. You know what I'm saying? I, I think we've all become numb to it. You're absolutely. Right. We become numb to it exactly, and what I'm looking at now is the fact that. Yeah, he's doing everything. Yeah, Trump got all these indictments. You know, I don't think Trump is going to win the presidency. But what I think is going to happen is that the person that they are grooming to come behind him, and you could best believe they're grooming somebody. Somebody. And they're going to learn from all the mistakes that Trump made. And when it happens, it's going to hit hard. Well, and it's going to be I, sudden. I, 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 I think we said this back in uh, 2016 when we when we first started kicking this these these little uh, members said we had this thing called Knights of the Sound Table, and, yes. and we we said it back then that if Trump gets in office, y'all were gonna have hell getting him out. Yeah, we knew that then, and this is the thing. Look at all the look at all the people that Trump has. When I and look, I'm I'm saying disrespected to be uh to be funny. But look at all the people that Trump totally disrespected and, and where they at now. They support him. Uh, they are supporting him. Yeah. So gotta be so what they tell you. Gotta be something said to it. They ain't not supporting Trump, they just supporting <laughs> the movement. Let's continue. No, I so go ahead. But the blockade's effects were deeply felt. Attempts to break the blockade. Germany attempted to counter the blockade through various means, 
These included the use of submarines to target British merchant ships, the development of synthetic substitutes for vital resources, and attempts to secure alternative trade routes through neutral countries. Admiral David Farragut, one of the greatest, not stand against the force of the... Okay, I just want y'all to take, before we close up here, I want y'all to take one more look at this ship. Okay. All right there, uh, Mr. Rochelle, be easy, my brother. Thank you so very much for dropping on, too. Mm -hmm. Great seeing you, bro. Uh, we'll catch up sometime this week, you know, in our, in our little our devil dog meetings. Y'all hit me up uh, sometime this week. We'll chop it up. But as you see right here, let's, let's take a look at this boat moving here again. Uh, this part here. Let's, let's go and see the ship again. Let me move up just a little bit. Here we go. Here we go. Let's go right here. All right, folks. Take a look at the ship right here. Plenty of room from that. For, as you see, there goes the pylon that is going to strike. Okay. Now I know this this clip here that we're going to see it's going to it's going to be slowed down so you won't see how quickly the bridge collapsed. But look for yourself. Power out. Oh wow, and his cars. Look at the cars now. They say there's construction. They say there's construction people on the bridge. Do you think so? The way them cars are running by? Power on again. Look at the cars. Made the turn. Square for now it's squared up to the pylon. Takes about there it is. No. Shortly after impact. Boom. Here comes it down. Shortly after impact, no rumble, no crumble, no creaks, no nothing. Am I wrong? No rumble, no crumble, no creaks. The walls of Jericho just came down. <laughs> Flat. <laughs> Man. <laughs> but am I right? I, I I I think I think that through it all, I mean, it was so far as only six people that's lost in that. Uh, it could have been a lot more. Yeah. Uh, it, it, so, right. and if you look at you look at the fact that them cars is crossing that bridge while that boat is heading towards that pillar, yeah, it should have been way more, uh, way more lost than that. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Is even at one thirty in the morning, that that, that, that major thoroughway like that is still going to be a lot of traffic. But you saw those cars that was on that bridge going at least the speed limit. If you got workers on the bridge, did y'all wait a minute? Let me back up this a little bit. We can see the bridge. Uh, what I'm thinking about, we can see it. We can see whether there was anyone on it. Was there any uh, construction lights or anything on the bridge? We can see it, can't we? We would see at least a yellow, uh, yellow beacon light or something. Let me see. Y'all see it? Y'all see anything? That's what I was saying. I wonder what end. That they were working right. on, right? Where are they working at? Yeah, but now that I'm paying attention, and I kind of see what you're saying because if it would have kept straight, it would have never been hit that pylon. It would never it hit that. Never hit that pylon. That's right. It would have ran, ran aground. It would have ran into the marsh. It would have done anything other than hit that pylon. As a matter of fact, one of the uh, the clip that I one of the clips that I was going to use, it, it one of the reporters said, if they, if they hadn't have done anything, it would have just gone on out to sea. That's why I was then, asking about the mayday. I'm like. Well, when did it originally lose power? I just still would like to course. know. Right, because you can okay, see so it, how many, let me how many times did it lose power? Because we see at least twice here. So let me throw what? this out there before we go. Uh, I mean, you aiming a conspiracy theory towards Trump, but what if this conspiracy theory is for Biden where something happens and he acts promptly to uh could be. To take care of it, it I mean, it, it can be. work both ways. Well, uh, Sean, what did what did Biden say earlier? 
He said, nothing to see here. I'm going to take care of it. I done talked to everybody. I done talked to uh, mayors and governors and state people. And I'm everything is squared away. I'm going to give them money. We're going to be fine. Okay, so has Pete Buttigieg said anything? Because, you know, he's the Secretary of Transportation. He, I don't which think covers he this. Him. I don't think he yeah. mentioned him. Yeah. Let me let me address let me address this one this comment right here. Maybe you should this find is pretty, it. This this is pretty interesting. Uh, there, uh, uh, Raji. He said Francis Scott Key doesn't fit anymore. Uh, I would first I'd ask you to ex explain that part of it because I think we might have touched on it earlier. I'm just curious to they're, they're, you know like minded people to come in and out of the room. And then then the second part of it says the flip is coming. The flip is coming to our world. Data is key. Meaning the flip of what? Uh, where do uh, you think we're about to move from an industrial society to a um, digital age, digital society? Um, doesn't fit anymore. There was something mentioned about Francis Scott Key. Um, we have to find out what it was. What was the last thing mentioned about that? Well, there, I think there is a, there is a, which I don't know why somebody would name their child that, but there is a lawmaker with this same name. Okay, so I, I, I understand exactly what you're saying, now. and I, and I'll agree with you with that. I think the, it is itself. It's going to turn into the digital age, and I think it's, uh, I won't say it's overdue, but it's, it's coming. The reason why I say that, I, I think they tried to, um, they tried that earlier, and we did. And I, again, on and on, on about this, but you know, the United States currency is not backed on anything. It has no, exactly. it has no, power. it's not has no staying power at all. There's no gold. There's no natural resources to back the United States uh, uh, money. So, if you go into the digital age, there's no such thing as what the dollar anymore. There's no pocket dollars anymore. No cash. Every, all all money is now electronic. So why not? Why not flip the country into the next age? We came from the Ice Age. We came from the Bronze Age. We came to this age. Wasn't they, wasn't they supposed to start this program called Fed Now, where everything had to go through the government? All transactions already started. had to go through the government started. before it started okay. in March of last year. Already started. All right. It already started. And notice as, as quickly as folks talked about it, no one talks about it anymore. Because you know news. what? Because we don't we don't see it, right. and it's one of those it's one of those things that you're not going to see. But I also know for a fact that um, they have started a, uh, a, a a law where all LLCs have to register with the government because they are seriously trying to make sure that mm -hmm. every Every cent of money, they know they know where it's going. They know where it came from. All of that. Agreed. Yeah, they just started that. Agree. Yeah, yeah they agree. just started that, that January first. Now comes into it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So uh, again, folks, let's 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 take one more last look at at, at this <laughs> ship here. Out of power. Power comes on. That ship seems to be moving to the right, to the right, mm -hmm. to the right, right. to the right. <laughs> I'm quite sure it was somebody on the board saying to the left, to the left, and they right. were listening. <laughs> right. Ah, dang it. I said left. Just put the evidence in the car, Junior. And and look, I'm quite sure that whoever was piloting the ship wasn't probably wasn't fluent in English, so he probably didn't understand. Left, now, right. right now, look how again, <laughs> look how quick that ship came down, folks. I mean, not the ship, but look how quick that bridge collapsed. Yeah, it was. It was just like, just touch me. I'm gonna fall. Just touch me. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't gotta do much. <laughs> So, so you equivalating this to a boxer that get in the ring with Mike Tyson, and Mike Tyson barely hit him, and he falls down, knocked out. Uh, what's what's the what's the, what's the what's the, what's the brother, <laughs> what was the brother that Mike Tyson knocked out in ninety seconds? Uh, he was a heavyweight. 
what's his name? Uh, Spinks, Michael Spinks. Yeah, Michael That's Spinks. Yeah, this, this is Mike Tyson versus Michael Spinks right here. <laughs> and, and he had nothing to lose. Knock me down. I'm gonna get a good payday out you. Go on about my business. Well, yeah, but then you also got to think about this too. What is a better way to um, make jobs? Because people got that bridge got to be rebuilt now oh yeah definitely it's, it's going to be so, re, it's going to be rebuilt at, 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 they, at, they, at, at that's their reason to pump money into the economy right because you got to hire that's people and it's going to take a lot of people right it's got, you're going to have to you're going to have to have a clean up you're going to have to you're going to have to dredge that that, that particular area again you know to make, to make sure that there's no hazards for the ship that's coming through uh not that uh no particular parts of the container that could rip the, the keel of the ship as it's going over it or something like that. You know, this, this is going to be, a, this is going to be an, a, a major cleanup effort. Right. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to put this out there for everybody to pay attention to. If you pay attention to this, watch how fast that bridge get built. That You'll bridge see. is going to get built faster than the McDonald's. <laughs> and, and, well, and, 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 well, you know, <laughs> you know, said somebody said that bridge, that bridge will be built quicker than the Dollar General in your neighborhood. <laughs> That's the point I was making. Because, <laughs> and and, and sorry, I know you're in Illinois too, so I know you know about this. But we have a bridge. We got the I eighty bridge that crosses into Joliet, and that bridge is finna collapse. And they ain't did nothing about that yet. But a couple years ago, when I lived in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was a 75 bridge and Biden actually met with the Ohio governor and the Kentucky governor to groundbreak repairs on that bridge because that bridge was for the collapse too. And that bridge is over a river. Mm. Mm. Yes. Well, uh, so, I, I, I guess, like I said, folks, I mean, if, if, if you're, if you're a conspiracy theorist, this is a good bad wagon to jump on because let's look at this. Mm -hmm. look, what, look, look at it. Look at it. <laughs> look how quick that bridge came down, folks. Hey, you know what that remind me of? The Bears a couple years ago when they was trying to uh, when they was trying to get to the Super Bowl and they had that kicker, they just couldn't kick between as wide <laughs> as the goalpost was. He could not get the ball between them, and they lost the they lost the game. It got eliminated from the playoffs. Because he could not kick the ball in between the goalposts. And he didn't do it not once, not twice, but three times. Right. Now, and as wide as that we, was, that's what that reminded me of. Thank you. But, but right before we, before we close up here, folks, uh, if you see this thing on the screen here. This is how many, this is how many states that, put that, put that particular port will affect. Ooh, wait. Wow. So that's that's over that's over like four fifths of the country right there. Yeah. Yeah. They, again, now look at it. I don't know, but I was <laughs> I was singing that earlier there, Raji, when it's uh, I, when I was putting this together. London Bridge is falling down, falling down. <laughs> I know it's a, hmm. it's a nursery rhyme, but it's, 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 uh, you know, truth is truth, fiction is fiction. But again, wow. going back to truth, look at look at all the states that will be affected by this, folks. If goods and services are not it's, okay, let's take uh, let's take one of the poorest states in the union, Kentucky. How long could they go without supplies to some of those rural back back backwater towns? They only got one store. That the the meat man and the milk man and the blue jeans man, all of them pull up at the same time. I think is it. I think what happened here with this was will be have long and far reaching consequences to our economy. Yeah, that's why. You I know what? Point. Now, now that I see the map, I see exactly what you're saying. Right. I see exactly what you're saying. Exactly. 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 Because, all right, that's not even count Kentucky. What about North Dakota, Iowa, Minnesota, right, right. South right. Dakota, right, Utah? I mean, these are states that are definitely right. in the consistent middle of the country. 
Right. That's right. It, absolutely. And you got to look at it. I mean, you could get you get you get uh, if you don't have a seaport, how else do you get goods and services into your town? Well, not services, but how else do you get goods into your town? Truck and rail, light rail and yeah, truck. truck and rail. But this is the thing. And I'm going to tell you now that I'm looking at this, just imagine. And this is the other thing that you haven't touched on, but I'm going to touch on it. Mm hmm. All these other states that got ports. I mean, all these other states got ports, but guess what? The price of trucking all in and in, in railroad and all this stuff is gonna get expensive. Up. Which yeah, means that everything is gonna get expensive. So if you paying if you paying two dollars for a gallon of milk now, you're gonna be paying nine dollars for a gallon of milk tomorrow. Like seriously, it's exactly. going up. Folks, if it's you live in the up. country, if you live out in the country, this is the time to start planting. This is the time to get you some 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 baby chicks by by uh, the end of the <laughs> summer by the end of, by the fall time they'll be full grown chickens. You go get you a, a a baby cow by the summertime by the end of the by, by a fall season you plant you go get you some seeds go get you some corn go get you some peas and get all that stuff because I can guarantee you the price of goods is going to go up and this is going to be the reason. For it. So if you Don't thought. Skyrocket. Right. If you thought we had it bad with the pandemic, just wait. Hey, I'm gonna tell you something. Pretty soon it's gonna get it's gonna cost you money to breathe. Okay. It already does. <laughs> they are they already found they already found a way to, to make you buy water right. by not cleaning the water. So now you exactly. have to buy clean water, but they're gonna find a way to make you pay for air. Right. What when that, you go what outside, they're gonna put monitors on everybody and say, Okay, how many breaths you took? Because it's zero point five cent per breath. <laughs> oh, you're gonna be paying for everything. Like we're gonna be paying for everything, folks. I'm trying to tell you. It's gonna be a Take budget for breath. that, man. <laughs> Nigga, you went over. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be like the light bill. Look, look. You, right. you, you get your you get your air bill. The air bill gonna be like two hundred dollars. You gonna be like, wait a minute. <laughs> Yeah, 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 I wasn't breathing that much. Why? You wide <laughs> nose having. <laughs> Jesus, I'm telling you, man, it's going it's, it's, it's just gonna cost money to live. Greed has taken over. Yeah. In the yeah. worst way, and yeah. you know, I, I was thinking about, and I think about this all the time. But just imagine somebody who lived in the 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 40s and 50s and passed away probably in the 60s. And they get resurrected today, and they they walk into a store, and the stuff that they used to pay in five, ten, fifteen cent for is not five or six dollars. Yeah, put me back in. The they'd dirt. be like, look, they'd be like, look, take me, take me away, right. take me, me away, me Cal guy, come no, no, get no me. Part, I don't want no parts of this. No, thank you, no thank you. you I, I, when did y'all start paying for water? Exactly. Something that's supposed to be free. free. But I'm going to tell y'all, and, and I really believe this, they really want this country to be a third world country. And if you really didn't know, look, when they raised the price of minimum wage, what did they start doing? Especially in California, they started laying off everybody. You know, all the fast food workers. And then what, what happens? The price of fast food go up. I mean, McDonald's has been in the news because now to get a Big Mac meal, I mean, where I'm at, Big Mac meal is like eleven dollars. So I, I, I want to take my family to McDonald's. I don't even go. I'm looking no at I like, don't, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't either. Go to restaurants no more, bro. I did tell you what. And this is thing, right? When you spent seventeen dollars for a, a soda, a burger, some fries, and the neighbor two of y'all, uh -uh. <laughs> right? But I don't know if y'all noticed, right? Now I do have. Oh, let me get in the camera. Because I was working at Five Guys like uh, late last year. And that's someplace I would never eat. Do if I had to spend burgers? my money. Huh? Do they have turkey burgers? I always wondered. No, they don't have turkey burgers. Okay. Who eats the turkey most healthy? Burgers? Me. Mm. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I only eat turkey on the holidays. <laughs> turkey, turkey is not an all around. <laughs> I'm no, sorry, just, but right. I, there's some things you don't make. The, 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 my stomach don't have a clock like that. Sorry, right? But I mean, 
I'm working at Five Guys and I'm I'm seeing people come in. One person order a, bur a cheeseburger with bacon, a fry and a drink, and it's like twenty twenty something dollars. You know what I'm saying? Right there. That's the place you want to be. That's ridiculous. Right. That's I'm not, ridiculous. I'm not, you know what I'm saying? No stress to the man. Now, do they have good food? But I'm, but I'm yes. not going to go to a restaurant to get beat. <laughs> man. <laughs> Tell me. But I'm telling you, like, for real, I, 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 only reason why I was eating the food because I worked it. I got my food for free. Oh, okay. I would imagine so. That's you know what I'm saying? Reason. So, I mean, there's reasons why I'm not working there no more, which is kind of personal. But, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, if I'm not working there, and since I stopped working at Five Guys and I actually quit working there for that reason, I have not been back in there because I would not, I refuse to pay 20 bucks. And now that I know how they make the food, which is basically the stuff that, look, you know, I, I I should be on. I should be on YouTube exposing them. Hmm. I should be on reels exposing them because the way they prepare the food is not hard. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like you know, for real. You, 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 you know, if you do an expose <laughs> on 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 the fast food joints, you know, uh, somebody might come get you. So let me know. I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go down in the chat. Hey, but it's people that it's people that's exposing these places. But yeah. the thing about it is, you know, it, it, I'm, I'm it looking needs at. To be. Yeah, and I'm looking at the overall impact of the economy. And now that you put all this in perspective, and I'm and, and I like the way you kind of like led all the way up to the end of the show to do that. Because that's the part that makes people think. When you go to the store, and and believe me, anytime when you can four and five dollars for a dozen of eggs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Something ain't right. Look, chicken wings. Like, I, I use chicken wings. Like, when I was coming up, and I'm quite sure, you know what I'm saying, a lot of people have, you know, but I came up at a time where chicken wings, chicken wings was the least part of the chicken that, you know, I mean, people ate them. Don't get me wrong. But you can go get chicken wings, 39, 49 cents a pound. Yeah. So you go to the store and get like two, three pounds chicken wings, and you know, everybody ate good. Yeah, chicken wings. What? Uh, I'm listening. A chicken wing. I'm sorry. You uh, uh, say that again. No, oh. I'm just saying. Oh, chicken wing. Uh, and I throw another one out there. Oxtail. Oxtails. I, 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 I was just thinking about that. You know, because you know, of course, <laughs> down, I, I, live, I live down here in the south. Okay, I live right. in Charleston, and you know. I remember there was a time growing up that you could go to, you know, to the butcher or to the grocery store and you could get those ham hocks and there'd be like eight, nine of them in there for like 99 cents. Yeah. Now you go to go to buy some ham hocks to season up your, I don't, I don't, I don't eat collard greens, but you know, uh, to season up your collard greens or your, whatchamacallit, you get two of them and it's eight ninety nine. Exactly. And I feel that every food that get popularized on YouTube, Facebook Reels, Instagram, TikTok, all that, when people go in there and they start cooking, they be like, hmm, so people are actually eating it? Okay, let's jack the prices up. And they jack the prices up. Because I remember when I was coming up, oxtails was like, and oxtails is what you ate at the end of the month. And believe me, I grew up in the project. So, you know, my mom, she got food stamps. And, you know, when the food was running low and... You know, you had some oxtails in the back for the end of the month, waiting on them the stamps to right. come oxtails. through. Uh, right, oxtails, oxtails neck bones. That's right. Yeah. Now right. them things are, are more expensive than chicken breast. Chicken wings cost more than chicken breast. Chicken breast used to be the food, the one part of the chicken that, that was the most expensive. Now yeah. it's the least expensive. Yeah. Chicken breasts are cost less than chicken thighs. Right. No, and nobody's now. digging on that white meat too much no more these days. Except for me. <laughs> Leave me alone. You the, same, you the same person that have a flat bread sandwich. That don't make no damn sense. That's right. <laughs> so so Charlie, let me ask you. Let me ask you, Popeyes or KFC, who 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 got it? Popeyes, because uh, KFC don't have real chicken. Okay. 
Ooh, that chicken from Popeye. But listen, folks, before we get up out of here, <laughs> I, I, I know I, I, we got to say we got to mention something about it. OK, so we're going we're gonna to talk about it. We're going to take about another five, five minutes. Okay. Puffy. Oh, geez. pass. Pass. <laughs> Papa pass. <laughs> all I'm all I'm gonna say about Puffy is is that the internet does not lose. Okay. No. <laughs> the no. internet always wins. No. And the thing about it is, said the thing about it is, what the police can't find, the internet finds. Exactly. Let me let me tell y'all. Yesterday I, I was I, I woke up, and I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna shut up. But I woke up and. I went on Facebook and somebody actually did an AI picture of Puff Daddy running from the police in a green suit. You know what they call him? The diddler. See? <laughs> he did. Now, for those that didn't know, there's a character in Batman called the Riddler. Yeah, the Riddler. Right. He used to be played by Frank Gorsuch. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And and this is what the internet does, you know. what I'm saying I, I I go on I go on reels, and people got puffy. You know how they have the faces, but they animate the actual yeah. faces on other characters. Yeah. Oh man, they is just tearing this man up. Yes, sir. Real. Hey, puffy. Let me ask you something. <laughs> this is TD Jakes. What's it feel like to be swallowed? Have you ever been swallowed up? <laughs> you about to find oh, that's out. Good. T.D. Jakes, they caught it too. You know what I'm saying? They exposed him too. <laughs> Listen, let, 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 let me just say this, and I, I said this to you earlier, Sharp, but I, I, I'll say this. <laughs> Everybody that's running cover for Puffy got something to hide. Everybody that's running cover for Puffy got something to hide, because let me say this. The feds do not go through this strategic coordination to come and bust your house in two different places simultaneously if you ain't did nothing wrong. They might accidentally come to your main oh. house. We need to talk to you. Uh, we need to ask you a few questions there, Mr. Combs. But to raid somebody's house and they trashed it. So they were looking for something. They trash those places. They trash. Too many people has died around Puffy Combs. Uh, exactly. Too many people. Too and many. And the body count is high. And it's and, and it's it, before but before the, the all the skeletons gonna get come out the closet. There's gonna be a whole lot of folks that we thought this that may have have, have met their demise through natural causes. We're gonna find out that these boys, this boy uh, Sean. Mm. P. Diddy, Puffy Combs, Brother Love. P stand for put him in the ground? We'll put him in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> P stand for put him in jail. P stands for... <laughs> you know I have no retort. <laughs> Char. Right. I'm, uh, look, Char, I, 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 I don't even know you no more, Char. <laughs> I just wondering. I wasn't sure. You know. She and she done came out of shell a little bit. She's still, she's yeah. still nice. She coming she's still, out. She's still nice though. Nah. She's been hanging no, around I know. Me. I know. Sorry. She's been Sorry, you cool. You cool. You know that. You know that. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to I'm trying I'm trying to get that mean to come out in her every once in a while. She <laughs> almost, almost succeeded one time, but she was like, nah. Well, she 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 dropped the bomb on this one because uh, I wasn't even thinking along them lines. And now, every time when I see anything got something to do with Puffy, so I'm gonna think about everything you just said. Okay. And I'm just gonna I'm look, even if I don't laugh out loud, I'm gonna be laughing in my mind. I'm gonna have my kids asking me, what, "Dad, what's so funny?" Put them in the ground. And I, I'm not gonna be able to tell them. I'm not gonna be able to tell them. Oh. I'm just gonna be like, don't worry about it. It's something that ran across my mind. I think, at, <laughs> I, I, said, I think at a certain point in time, and, and like you might all tell them, because you know, next thing you know, it'd be like, you know, that might be cracking up a little bit. Let's see if we can hit him some hell. <laughs> but remember, they did the same thing to Birdman. Now, how, Birdman survived it though. Y yeah, but let, he survived it. Let, let me just let me just go ahead and, and wind up with this. Listen, if you're if you're a hip hop fan, or if you're a, uh, a music aficionado like we are, I like to consider ourselves as that said. We can go yes. back and see the history 
of Sean P. P. Diddy Combs. The death and destruction that he left behind. It's chronicled. Exactly. It's chronicled. Biggie, Tupac, Craig Mack. Think about uh, Shine. Shine went to jail for this man for 10 years. Mm -hmm. Jennifer Lopez was an up and rising star in the black community until she got with who? Uh, I agree. Right. I think that she kind of recovered, but I don't think I think she fumbled the ball as she recovered. Yeah. So, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, because folks started questioning her judgments. You mean you're hanging out with these thugs and these hooligans? She got a good question her judgment. A lot, a lot after after the shooting, Jennifer Lopez lost a whole lot of steam. Even the dress couldn't help her. But I'm just saying, you know, what's done in the dark comes to the light. And, you know, just like Malcolm X said, chickens have come home to roost. Yeah. Watch your three, your six, and your nine, puppy, because they're going to get you. They're going to get you. They're yep. going to get you. Believe me. You are the new sacrificial lamb. They're going to get you. Ask Chuck and I think, I think it's because he's high profile, too. Yeah. And I believe, and I truly believe, that they tried to make the example out of Bill Cosby. They made the example out of R. Kelly. But I think they're really going to make the example out of Puffy. I think that Puffy's going to get hit a lot harder than R. Kelly, R. Kelly got hit. Well, seriously. And you're, you're right. You're, and, I, and again, you're right. About, I, you're, I agree with that. Why? Because didn't Puffy own a, a media company called Revolt? Yep. And didn't Bill, wasn't Bill Cosby trying to buy NBC or a portion of NBC? No, he was trying to buy NBC. Okay, you were trying and, to buy um, NBC. So what's and what's this the, the thing? But this is the thing, and I'm gonna say this, okay? Um, when Bill Cosby tried to buy NBC, yeah, he had partners, but Bill Cosby had the cash up front. Exactly. He had he the cash. Need he didn't. He need didn't partners. need partners. Right. He just. Needed but he place. tried to make it. He tried to make it so that okay, I got a few of these white faces with me, so it ain't gonna be so bad. And think about what happened to Byron Allen. Byron Allen tried to buy a couple media companies, and they shot him down quick. And he That's got right. the cash. He lit, uh, it, right, and he had, uh, Byron, uh, Byron Allen has plenty of cash. We know. But anyway, oh yeah, he got it. Like, like I said, folks, we could go on and on about the the, the Sean Puffy Combs uh, Combs uh, 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 dilemma that's going on here. Me, I think I'm going to wait a couple more days to see exactly what comes in before I do a, a stream on it. Because, you know, uh, everything is still fresh. Uh, uh, the, the shock value hadn't really hit up now because everybody's talking about it. So there's people out there putting up bum information. I like to wait. I like to well, I, I I think what's going to end up happening is I don't think they're going to get him on everything else. But what I do think that they're going to get him on is Biggie. Because I think that's what they're trying, they trying to get to. They think that they solved the Tupac thing. But I don't think I don't think that they have. But I think they're still going to hang dude out to dry because they know who killed Tupac. And even though dude was with them, he didn't pull the trigger, but they still going to get him. But I think that what they're trying to hang him on is Biggie. I, they they get more news and more um, more media coverage for that than they would anything else that Puffy has done. I, I I'll, I'll agree to disagree with that uh, said, and the reason why I say that is Puffy stuck his, his Puffy stuck his hand in the wrong set of panties. He stuck his hands in some little white girl panties, and she told. Mm. She told. What you happened? Sure that was a girl. Yeah, she was a little white girl. She said, "Picked him up off okay. the street. Picked her up off the street. He adopted her because she, she wanted to. She looked like she was lost. Didn't have no real family to speak of. So her parents said it was okay for them to adopt her. Uh, do, have you ever met a 12, 13 year old? Well, I would say nine, 10, 11, 12 year old girl that introduced herself as, "Hey, hey, I'm a so and so, so and I'm a Scorpio." What twelve year old girl does that? Right. But remember, that's the same thing that Kelly R. Kelly went down for. Okay? Some people was literally letting their girls go with him. Now all of a sudden, y'all saw him and y'all didn't let him. Yeah, that, that's, like that, nobody. That, it's two parts. It's a two part story, sir. 
and no one's yeah. no one's doing the other part of the story justice. Yeah, we can hold R. Kelly and we can hold Puff Daddy and we can hold all these other pedos responsible, but we also got to hold some of these parents responsible that know what's going on and they still take their children there anyway. But that's a whole. And I totally story. agree with that. Yeah, I totally that's agree a whole with that. Story, and that's a whole other stream that we'll definitely do. So, with that, folks, uh, any uh, uh, closing up uh, words before we get out of here? Said I'll give you the first shot. <laughs> well, I mean, um, like I said, I'm I'm going to kind of follow these stories. So if I come back on, you know, what I'm saying I will be, you know, well informed on this. But I'm going to pay more pay attention to uh, what's going on with Trump because. I literally cannot believe that this man is getting away with everything in front of my eyes, like for real. Like, yeah, I, I can't believe it. <laughs> so I'm definitely watching that. Right. It's definitely it's definitely disheartening to see that they say that the, there's no two tier justice system here in the American uh, society. But we 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 as all as the, the, the regular Americans see it in front of us every day. And that's for black and white. Does this seem to me there's a justice system for for rich folks and there's a justice system for poor folks? Sure. I'll give well, I I look at it like this before, and I, I I'm gonna say this real quick. It's a justice system for him. It is a justice system for rich folks. Then it's a justice. System. It's a three tier justice system. Says okay. that's how I feel. But I, I, I I'll, I'll agree with that, sir. I'll I'll give you that. Sure. You want to uh, closing uh, closing thoughts before we get on up out of here? I think she might have stepped away. Uh, yeah, if, you, if you're talking, Shar, you're still on mute. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to thank everybody for hanging out with us here at the Chop Shop. Again, keep your eyes and your ears peeled on what's going on around you. It's not so much the social media aspect of, you know, who's dating who, who's kissing who, who's sleeping with who. There's a whole lot more things out here that we as uh as so-called content creators can be reporting because as you see most of our information is more correct than what we get from mainstream media hell mainstream media just hired nbc well you know, although they fired her they just hired the head of the republican national party that was a devout conspiracy i mean a uh, 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 election denier and nbc was about to have her have her on as a contributor a political contributor really nbc won't be watching that network no more keep your eye on this boat situation keep your eye on the economy watch how things slowly but surely in the next couple of weeks start to go higher eggs milk juice gas watch if you think I'm, if you think I'm, make, I'm, I'm, I'm exaggerating. Watch. That's a major seaport right there, folks. That's a major thoroughfare of our, our economy. It is, and to have that disrupted for the amount of time, any amount of time, right now, there's no, no, there's no goods coming into that port. They're all being diverted to someplace else's. Look how many look how many places in the United States in that area it serves. Let's not look up. Look, let's, let's not look out over to the west coast, the east coast. Look, look at look at the places that surrounding you. Depend on that port. That's all I'm saying. Sure, I'll give you the I'll give you the last and final word. Be careful, everyone, and have a good week. There you have it, folks. You can't get no better than that. We're about to get up out of here. It's uh, about uh, 1033 here in the port city of Charleston, South Carolina. And it's about uh, uh, 933 out there in Chi-Town. Yes. Yes, it is. I sh almost certainly will, uh, uh, Rod. There's absolutely no way that I could get around not involving the FBI and into, um, into the... Uh, uh, the pup, uh, pup, Sean Puppy Comb story because you had to look at it. Law enforcement at some point in time had to be tipped off to some of the things that was going on. But we'll, we'll definitely dwell into it. Again, I appreciate for all you folks that come out here. Rod G, it was nice meeting you. I think this is the first time I've seen you in, in, my, in my stream. So, again, thank you very much for hanging out there with us, folks. Uh, again, um, we're going to be doing the micro crisis uh, here. I got to upload for that short that I'll, I need to finish and put that up. Uh, this Saturday, we'll be doing another uh, micro crisis uh, up, 
upload or we might go live with it. Uh, I think if we can get uh, my man uh, uh, Super Slide 75 over here to chop it up with us. And from that, folks, uh, watch your three, your six, and your nine. Be safe out there. That's all we can tell you. Have a great night. We out you. Peace.